Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 203 of At Odds with Wrestling. Joe and Adam here. Adam, hello. How are you? I'm doing good, Joe. You just caught me taking a, a, a swig of coffee because I'm a sleepy boy now. Mm-hmm. You know, doing nothing like every day is exhausting. <laughs> What again? Well, I don't even know what time you sleep in till. I know you uh, run late. Are yeah. you on? Are you on Bix hours? <laughs> I don't think I'm quite there yet. I, I try to make a hard bedtime of four a.m. Right. And I set my alarm for eleven a.m. I figure that's a nice respectable time, you know. Sure. Uh, but then it takes about an hour or two to like get fully moving because like the alarm goes off and all that does is move me from the bed to the couch. You know, and I'll spend like an hour like on social media or reading my emails or taking another nap, you know, a post sleep nap. <laughs> I assume with uh, gas prices finally starting to come down a little bit, you'd be uh, beaten feet to do more um, doll safari. And, you know, not to say that you weren't doing more doll safari previously and not to say that you weren't doing it this weekend. Um, yeah, I I. I've kind of conceded locally to just using BrickSeek for like the four things I'm looking for at Target gotcha. and Walmart. Um, so I haven't been going to the same stores over and over again. Um, but I do have tentative loose plans to go visit Jay Gold uh, on Monday in New oh, York okay. and hit up the stores. Um, we originally planned to go this past weekend or this past week and, uh, He had, like, real adult responsibilities, so we couldn't do it. But uh, maybe this Monday. And I know uh, Tim from uh, Final Wrestling Place has me on a search for Blue Tista. So I'll be looking for that and, Mm -hmm. you know, looking for some stuff for myself. Yeah. A wife, a kid, a mortgage. I tell you, all (laughs) these things get in the way of picking up dolls. I know. What the hell is wrong with these people? They need to get their priorities straight. Don't they realize that most of my summer of Adam has been wasted because nobody wants to drop everything and just go to a theme park with me? Mm -hmm. (sighs) Mm-hmm. Ridiculous. I'd go, well, so that's even with a wife and a kid. I'd be like, if I had that opportunity, ooh, (laughs) I'd go go myself, you know? I'd be like... I'd charge up the MP3 player. I'd go on a bunch of rides, but I'm not a ride guy anyway. But anyway, you should have been using this time to watch some wrestling. No. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying. I just uh, arranged the toy room. That's all I did. That was close. Yeah, to that is. Enough. I'll give you that. That was uh, uh, quite the undertaking. And uh, it's one thing for us to discuss over these however many months that we've been doing the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll call it your problem. Okay. Uh, but it's another thing to see the visual representation of your problem. <laughs> and Joe, here's the thing with with the displays that I, I tweeted out today. Um, it, it's obviously it's just a lot of boxes on shelves. But what you don't realize is that there's boxes behind those boxes. So uh-huh. all you're really seeing is the first layer. You have to, I had to prioritize. That was what a lot of the organizing was: is what stuff you just don't see anymore. You know, right. it's bad. <laughs> All right, well, let's get in some of the wrestling that you could have been watching to commemorate today. Yep. And now, At Odds With Wrestling presents This Day in Wrestling History. All right, getting this non-wrestling thing out of the way. Uh, If you believe the opening credits on this day... In 1973, the events of Texas Chainsaw Massacre happened. (laughs) I had to throw that in there. Legitimately one of my favorite movies. Not one of my favorite horror movies. uh, One of my favorite movies of all time. Uh And that's like one of... There there was a time where like horror movies would claim to be based on or inspired by real events, whatever. And that's one of the dates that I have in my calendar to remember (laughs) me. uh, To remind me. I couldn't tell you what day my dad's birthday is, but Uh I absolutely know what uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre Day is and what Return of the Living Day Dead... uh, Return of the Living Dead Day is. Oh, priorities, you know? That's fine. Priorities, yes. All right, right. but on on this day in wrestling history in 1993, World Championship Wrestling held Clash of the Champions 24. Uh, Notable for me, uh, because this was the first time that I ever went to Knobles on this day. And uh, I was a real pain in the ass to the other people that I went with because I'm like, we got to get home to watch uh, Clash of the Champions. (laughs) And they were like, one, wrestling, ew, two, 
aren't you taping it? And I said, yes, I'm taping it, but I want to watch it live. And they all rolled their eyes and, you know. <laughs> you didn't want it spoiled on 1993 Twitter, you know? Right. Well, again, so this is one of those deals uh, where, you know, obviously watching it live and then you find out some of the information later. Um, you know, we're not going to go over the whole card, but there's two notable things that happen on this card. So the opening match is Arn Anderson and Paul Roma, uh, the four horsemen, defeating the tag team champions, the Hollywood Blondes of Steve Austin and Lord Steven Regal. <laughs> yeah. So Pillman got injured, right? This was back in the day when they were doing like a three months worth of taping at the Worldwide Studios in Disney MGM. Mm -hmm. And they had already banked like three months worth of TV of the horsemen not only like winning the tag team titles, but losing them to the Nasty Boys. And this was like the next available live event that they had to get the belts off the Hollywood Blondes and onto the Four Horsemen. Yeah, because they couldn't just be like, all right, we'll we'll do it for the next show or something like that. Because nope. it's already in the can. Yeah, it's already in the can. We've already got months worth of TV ready to go. So Pillman gets hurt. They're like The match has to happen. So they just like pull Regal out of another match and just put him in here randomly, right? Yeah. Uh, but yeah. this event, Adam, was also one of, I would say, one of the top five moments in all of wrestling history. Uh oh. And I'm going to play it for you now. As soon as I pull up the clip, you're going to know what it is, but I want to play as much of it as I can. All right. All I have to say is. Our partner is going to shock the world because he is none other than the Shock Master! Right. The Shock Whoa. Master! <laughs> I told you. He's pantomiming miming and the 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 overdub hasn't kicked in yet. There you go. So you're the man that rules the world. They call me the Shockmaster. You've ruled the world long enough, Sid Vicious. Get ready. Come on, you want a piece of me? You want a piece of me? Come and get me. Come after me, Sid. I'm ready. Along with Davy Boy, Sting, and Dusty Rhodes, we'll see you at the Fall Brawl at the War Games. Until then. So the most important part of that <laughs> is Sid's hair is phenomenal. <laughs> and it's like, I'll get you next time, Gadget. Next time. Like oh, my voice. God. <laughs> And it was the, it was, and like Sting should have known in kayfabe that something was up because it was the same voice as the Black Scorpion, you know? <laughs> yeah. I think that's the first time I, like, I've seen the GIF 80 million times, but that's the first time I've heard the audio in a long time. So, oh, I okay. That. I was going to say, in a long time, I was going to say, yeah. oh my God. No, no, I remember watching that live. You know, I was watching WCW at this time. And I, I just, like, try to think, I wish there was an alternate universe, like a multiverse this scenario where I can see how that would have played out if he didn't fall, you know? It, like, so uh, that's what I was going to get to. It probably would have been a singles program of Sid versus the Shockmaster. Yeah. <laughs> which would have been amazing. <laughs> But I just want to see, like, months of him cutting promos, and I want to see, like, how they handle the unmasking, you know, what he've done, like, a he comes out to the ring and takes his mask off, like Al Snow in WWE, you know, like, I, it, there's so many questions left to be answered. Uh, one of the most memorable moments in all of wrestling, I tell you. I'm glad I got home from Knobles early to see that, you know, it was worth <laughs> yeah. it. I'm glad I got the elite, the San Diego Comic Con elite, and I got a right. micro crawler of that too. So exactly. Uh, so uh, also on this day, wrestling history, 1996 uh, was this World Wrestling Entertainment presented the SummerSlam. 
uh, from the Gund Arena in Cleveland, Ohio. Again, not going over the entire card. Uh, this was Mankind versus The Undertaker in the Boiler Room Brawl. <laughs> okay. Where uh, Paul Bearer turns on The Undertaker. And this is one of those things. This was pre them having like giant like screens and stuff. They so rolled while- out the they rolled out the TVs like it was you're in like grade school and you had the substitute teacher. <laughs> exactly. So and they rolled them out on three sides of the ring. So it was like only those people in the front row got to see most of the match, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this, is, this is like 96. Is this the start of the cinematic matches or was there some kind of weird like White Castle of Fear shit that happened before that? So you had the mini movies in WCW in like 92, 93, which mm-hmm. led up to actual matches. But there wasn't like any like match matches. They were just, you know, longer, more elaborate location set promos. But uh, this could be the very first cinematic match. Uh, somebody get back to us and let us know. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like to be proven right on that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, main event uh, was Shawn Michaels defending his title against Vader. And uh, this was the beginning of the Shawn that everyone knows and loves. <laughs> Just working well with everybody, going with the flow. Uh-huh. That might come up later. <laughs> um, and in the opening on the free-for-all, uh, the, the big push continues after winning the King of the Ring two months prior. Uh, again, on the free-for-all, Stone Cold Steve Austin wins over Yokozuna because Yokozuna is too fat and broke the top rope. <laughs> and this is like unrelated but related. But Joe, can you give me a can you give me a Zuna theme here? Do 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 do. Not the uh, hipped up version. Not the new gimmick. But. Yeah, I like it. All right, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, but it just so you know, I I always point to this show. Uh, specifically when people like the, the, the revisionist history that world wrestling entertainment spins for you is Austin wins the King of the ring. He cuts the Austin 316 promo. And then the next night he's the biggest star in the world. And yeah. they had that planned all along and they pushed him to the moon right off that. Yeah, definitely. It, took, it was a slow burn. Uh, definitely a slow <laughs> burn. Uh, also on this day in wrestling history is your head-to-head Monday Nitro versus Monday Night Raw. Uh, relatively lackluster shows out of both. Uh, I guess you can say Raw had the first heel Rocky promo, Rocky My Via promo. Okay. Uh, he was still getting his feet underneath him. Um, and this was now we're on our third week in a row of J.J. Dillon offering Sting a contract to wrestle anyone. Ooh, this is the you... week where he offers up Brian Adams. Oh, he had to take it this time. Well, no. Oh. <laughs> uh, this was when the crowd is really chanting, uh, they want Hogan. Sting even goes into the crowd and gets a fan sign, possibly a plant, that says Sting versus Hogan, brings it into the ring and holds it up for everyone else to see, while J.J. Gillen stands there, stroking his chin, of like, ah, <laughs> oh, I wonder... What do we do next? <laughs> I'm sure who, me off to this day. <laughs> I'm sure whoever he's offered next, he'll take it though. Right. We'll see. Uh, also <laughs> on this day in wrestling history, 2007, uh, Chikara held event, an event from the Heller, uh, the Heller town. I forget what the cute name that Bryce had for it, but it was a, uh, here comes the international invaders. Second stage. Uh, again, 2007, so uh, again, doing my Gazintas, however many years ago that was, I'm not good at math, 15 years ago? Sure. Okay, uh, <laughs> this was the first time that Brody Lee did the big rig trucker gimmick. Okay. This was what his was he, day. What was he doing before that? He was the right stuff Brody Lee. He came out like wearing like a velvet shirt and a floppy hat and had... <laughs> purple and black tights that had tassels on them. <laughs> Where's that figure? I want to see that. <laughs> That's going to be the luminary set. It's going to it's going to come packed with the Dusty Taker and IB Green and Cage and all the other uh upstate New York uh trash wrestlers. <laughs> uh but also uh this was the first ever matchup between Claudio Castagnoli and Pac. The, the man bastard. that gravity forgot, or the bastard pack, or whatever it was. Oh, okay. I didn't know he was through your car. 
or yep. like he went through. Yeah. Uh, he was in the States, I think, over the summer. I did my due diligence to make sure that this was their first encounter, and it was. They end up wrestling at PWG maybe like two or three weeks later after this. Um, they had tagged up before in Germany, but they had never wrestled each other in a singles until this. And again, I say it's been 15 years. Let's run it back on TV, huh? Yeah, no, I, I'd agree to see that. I think that'd be pretty good. I mean, that's the second most anticipated match for Pac right now, other than seeing him team up with Stephen Amell again. I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> well, he did volunteer his services, and by he, I mean Amel, uh, to mm-hmm. the box on Twitter. I don't know if you yeah. saw that. I'm surprised mm-hmm. they didn't take him up on that, you know, to get some of that heel synergy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and last but not least on this day in wrestling history, 2013, SummerSlam emanated from the Staples Center in Los Angeles. Um, a mostly forgettable World Wrestling Entertainment show, but this was main evented by Daniel Bryan taking on John Cena for the World Wrestling Entertainment Championship with Triple H as the special guest referee. Bryan wins, beats Cena, Triple H turns on Bryan, and Randy Orton cashes in his money in the bank and beats Bryan immediately afterwards. Boo, fuck Randy Orton. Ah, uh, we've all come around at Randy Orton these last couple of years. Uh, I certainly have not, but go on. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like I said, a, a largely forgettable show there. Um, but again, this is like an era where there was a lot of largely forgettable stuff in World Wrestling Entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> so that's all I got for this day in wrestling history. It was a busy one, but I think we got through it pretty quick. Yeah, no, I appreciate your brevity. But you know what won't be brief? Is all of my many talking points, Joe. I'm ready. All right. I will just say this one real quick. This does not warrant a discussion, but this goes in the errors and omissions section, and I will take the L on this. And then the fucking doll is back, Joe. I spent 10 minutes last week talking about how happy I was that the damn doll was gone, and uh, somebody came out with it on Raw this week, so I'm sad. That's just all I'm going to say about that. You could have lied and not mentioned this, and I would have had no idea because I didn't watch. <laughs> I only watched bits and pieces of Raw this week. Well, I, I've been told by the internet that, that like WWE is back and it's the must see show. So like I watch it, and uh, uh, they're not right. They're they're definitely not right. And uh, I happened to catch that. So I just feel like I, I wanted to make a point to point out that you know it's back. Well, I'm very sorry for the. Ad- the uh, addition of the doll back into canon. Yeah. Yeah. They need a wood chipper. Deal with that thing once and for all. Hmm. Um, but we saw how wood chippers work with mops. I don't know how they'd work with Lily, you know? <laughs> oh, poor Moppy. Oh, it's too soon, man. Too soon. Um, anyways, my first talking point. And Joe, you're just going to poo poo all over this because you're allergic to fun and you don't, Maybe. Like a good, you don't like a good time. You don't like storytelling, bro. And I just want to say how much of a delight it was definitely paying for uh, this iPay-Per-View and not at all finding other means to watch uh, (laughs) uh, the GCW Homecoming Night 2, the beautiful renewal of vows between Broski and Mrs. Broski, uh, you know, presided over by Maven, that coward Maven. uh, (laughs) And, uh, you know, obviously... I don't know why I just expected this, this wrestling wedding to go right. Um, and, and shame on me, Joe, shame on me. But uh, Nick Gage came out and ruined everything, ruined uh, the perfect wedding. And, uh, you know, I have a feeling that once Gage is done losing to Moxley, uh, that's going to move Broski into that, that title picture and everything's going to be right in the world in GCW. Well, as right as GCW can be. But I will just say, I know that you shat, you basically spent the last week just shitting all over this, and I had to talk about it because here's the thing. You go into this, you know this is a corny heel doing something over-the-top annoying, and it has to end with him getting his comeuppance, and it ended with him getting his comeuppance, Joe. So it, it was perfect sports entertainment. And if you're not into sports entertainment, I get it. But for what it was and what it was meant to be, I thought it was executed very well. It went on a little too long and uh, might not have been the best use of an entire second half of a GCW show. But 
watching it from the comfort of my recliner on my iPad uh, and dismissing all the pop-ups on the website I was on, I still enjoyed watching it. So I just wanted to talk about it. Do you need a better link for that sort of thing? Eh, it's all right. No, I'm good. Right. It's a challenge. I, I appreciate the challenge. Okay. <laughs> Uh, you did bring up a few of my points that I would have in talking about the Broski and poor Chelsea <laughs> wedding renewal vows thing, right? Yeah. So, um, yes, too long. And yes, it was so Broski can get his comeuppance, of course. Um, was there another match or did that did this close this night too? That was it. They went to intermission. They took the ropes off the ring and set everything up. And then they came okay. back and did that. That was it. So this was the main event of the yeah. night two of their two night homecoming show. Yes. But I will say like that the fans got to see Nick Gage bloody sure. somebody up that they hate. So they sent the fans home happy, I would say. Okay. And I'm, listen, I'm with you. It gets broski heat by doing this sports entertainment bullshit in what's allegedly the hottest independent promotion going today. <laughs> yeah. um, here's my real nitpick about it. When the other roster members, and they really had a scrape because they only booked two <laughs> women a month for the bridesmaids for Chelsea. And then you have like Jimmy Lloyd is the ring bearer. And then you get other like out like in GCW people that are outside of the broski sphere to be involved with this. I think it makes them look lame by being a party to this. Like mm -hmm. Jimmy Lloyd should be like, fuck this. I don't care about broski. I don't want to be part of this. Right. Yeah. But there he is just like cheesing it up for the whole thing. And I think it makes the roster members involved look lame by being involved with broski's lameness. Um <laughs> And the only person who came out unscathed on this was uh, the smartest man in wrestling, Brian Myers, uh, who publicly on the on social media said, I'm glad I RSVP'd no. And then for the last two weeks on the podcast, no sold broski and said, I don't know what you're talking about. I retired from GCW. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously... Uh... You could not have the finish of this if you had Smart Mark and Myers there because it's like, you know, they, that's the numbers game would not work in Nick Gage's favor. You'd have to have other guys there. Plus, it would actually cost real money to get all these people there. Um, so, yeah, it is kind of weird seeing a bunch of uh, bridal party people that I could not recognize, despite the fact that I try to watch all the broski stuff on GCW. Um, they should have just brought in the Philly Marino experience, had them work Saturday night and then do that spot on Sunday. Now, it would have been fine. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I thought for what it was, it was enjoyable. Uh, I am not purchasing any of the bloody gear. Uh, despite no? the fact that I saw some of it go up on whatnot, but I'm not, per if I passed on the boots for last year's title win, I'm certainly not buying, uh, any tassel jackets for, for this show. But, um, but I do want to say, like I, I mentioned it in one of our group chats that uh, a friend of mine, uh, he doesn't listen to this show, so no plugs for him, but he reached out to me that one of his buddies canceled and he actually offered me tickets to both days. Um, I didn't feel like doing like the three hour each way round trip for it or like six sure. hour round trip. Um, but like I, it does get me itchy to go see, uh, I don't want to say GCW, but it just it gets me itchy again to go and see wrestling and hopefully, uh, or luckily there's some wrestling coming up that we'll talk about in a week or two, not nowhere near close to GCW type of wrestling, but, uh, mm -hmm. for the better. Uh, so, uh, you mentioned raw and I'll come back and I'll just say one of my talking points, uh, has to be, how low the bar for a good Monday Night Raw is <laughs> that the fact that they said hospital and not local medical facility and that they said wrestler and wrestling yeah, uh, and people were losing their goddamn minds over that is the saddest state of affairs in the world. And listen, I, I, the, I did end up watching the Kevin Owens uh, uh, Drew McIntyre match and that was really good. Um, you know, the bits and pieces that I picked up, they're still teasing more people returning on Monday Night Raw, which we'll get to in a little bit. But the fact that those two words being said on Monday Night Raw was like, oh, man, thank you, Triple H. You've saved wrestling. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the greatest thing ever. Yeah. 
Like I, I watched that promo and uh, the Kevin Owens and uh, Drew McIntyre, and I thought the promo was really good, but not because of the "we're wrestlers, we're in a wrestling ring, let's wrestle." Like that. Like I get that that's there to pop the internet, but I enjoyed that promo. That with like notwithstanding, if that makes sense, you know, for sure. Um, and yeah, like the whole like all the flowers that were being given to, to Triple H a couple weeks ago, uh, I think they're starting to wilt. You know, we got just having Dexter Loomis run out and get taken away by security ain't going to do it. And uh, uh, I, I don't know how excited you are, Joe, but I'm super excited that they got the, the remaining members of Hit Row to show up. Well, uh, okay. Talk about so, moving that needle. <laughs> so that was going to be my other thing. Oh. Uh, they did talk about it a little bit on uh, Pod Van Dam this week. You know, at Triple H, he's bringing back all of his old broken toys, and Ed made the. And I will uh, let Ed know because uh, Jonas did uh, tell him to ask me. Yes, that's how it happened in the Avengers <laughs> Endgame movies. Thanos's dad took the Infinity <laughs> Stones, not gems, and threw them in the garbage, and then Thanos came back and fished the ones that were left out of the garbage. And then everyone cheered. The yeah, you're, end. you're forgetting somebody went to the garbage first and took all the good gems. Right. And then Triple H had to take the, the gems that nobody wanted. Would, to- would Tony Khan be Pip from the Infinity Watch? Uh, I, don't I, yeah, I don't know that reference. All right. If it's not MCU, I don't know. The, the, these funny Jesus books, they're not... They're, if they're if they're on paper, they're not real. They're not real until they're on a movie screen or, or a Netflix show or Disney+. Plus. All right. So I have it here, and it's going to be a little bit. So they bring back uh, uh, Killer Cross and Scarlet, which is funny. They bring back Dexter Loomis, which is funny, but I like Dexter Loomis. Yeah, I got um, no beef with him. I got no beef with him. And then they bring back Dollar King, Top <laughs> Dollar, whatever the hell his name is, right? Yeah. And hey, good for B-Fab and good for Cousin Tahuti. But Dollar King is one of the funniest rehires. It's like, we better scoop him up before he gets fatter. I don't know. All right. So yeah, Tony I, Khan's been trying to reach him. Just uh, the, the line's too busy from all of his uh, shoe influencing and stuff like that. You know, I don't know. Right. Now, again, I, I did go and compile a list here of uh, a bunch of the people that have been let go from World Wrestling Entertainment. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to go through the list as it was. So, uh, and again, we're, I'm not going to, like, so, Troy, and again, it's a long list. There's a ton of people, okay? Oh, geez, and, yeah. And, right. Okay, so, um, Troy Donovan is that two dimes guy that got Never. let go from Tony Pepperoni's crew, right? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Isn't he in, like, AEW, though, right? He is in AEW already. All right. Dexter Loomis is back. Malcolm Bivens in AEW. Yeah. Uh, Harlan is in AEW. Wait, is Harlan uh, the guy in the Trust Busters? Yes, Okay. See, I don't know them by their NXT name. Okay. So, right. So, a lot of them, I didn't go and find like everyone's NXT names, you know, like who gives a shit, right? Yeah. Uh, Nash Carter is the guy from MSK that was maybe racist. Yeah. Like Hitler mustache guy. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Hardy's back. I think, okay. Uh, Swerve uh, Strickland uh, is an AEW. Ashante is back. Top Dollar is back. I think Drake Maverick is back as a producer. Okay. Okay. Uh, Tegan Knox is back, right? Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Where's Tegan Knox? I thought she was... No, she's not back. No, no, that's okay. No, My bad. I don't think... I think... I could be wrong, but I don't think she's wrestled anywhere since she left. I think she's... Like, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Keith Lee is an AEW. B-Fab is back. Karen Cross is back. Scarlett Bordeaux is back. Uh, as I'm just going through the list here, as you're seeing the names and stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, Ember Moon is gone. Uh, isn't Trey Baxter, isn't he like Blake Christian in AEW? I forget what his name was. Uh, there. yeah. Um, no, no, he I was someone know. else. Yeah, the guy, the, the Blake Christian's like the ginger. Okay. He's probably uh, on this list somewhere, and we just don't recognize Yeah, him. Bobby Fish is in AEW. Mercedes Martinez is in AEW. Uh, Jake Atlas is in AEW, question mark. Leon, Leon Ruff. Ruff is in AEW. Uh, I think Tyler Rust was on, like, Dark or Elevation. He's not signed or nothing. Okay. 
Uh, Kurt Stallion is mega canceled. <laughs> He's never coming back. Tony oh, is in AEW. Davari is in AEW. Uh, Matt Par- uh, Matt Martell and Chase Parker in AEW. Aleister Black, Buddy Murphy, uh, Ruby Riot, AEW. I don't think Santana Garrett got like an all leap thing. Um, Velveteen Dream is mega canceled, but I'm not taking him off the list. Uh, Samoan Joe is in AEW. Poor Chelsea. Mm hmm. Uh, Andrade is an AEW. Kushida, well, he's in New Japan. Yeah, I, that don't mean nothing, you know. Uh, Claudio is an AEW. Tony Storm, Kyle O'Reilly, Adam Cole, Danielson. And then the last one, there's the big show. So I'm going to okay. slowly go through this list, right? Yeah. Oh, Dakota Kai is still there. Like okay, Dakota Kai. Those. Yes, yes, my bad. I thought I grabbed her. Okay. So I want you to look at this list, okay? Yeah. I'm going slow. It's going to make make for great. So as I'm going through this list, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Adam pick one person off this list. And I'm going to pick one person off this list. Now, if they're a group, right? Like, and I'll just throw this out here. Like, if you want to say, like, Fandango and Tyler Breeze are the next ones to come back, right? Yeah. Then that counts because they were an act on TV, right? Yeah. But as I'm going through the list, I want you to pick someone... And I don't care if you want to pick it as, like, it would be the funniest person if they come back. Or it's the th- person that you think is the most likely to come back. Okay. Ooh, you have a good Pete. feel for the list? I'm, I'm missing Billy Kay and Peyton Royce there, but uh, <laughs> they, that that's who I wish. <clears throat> okay. But, um, no, so I was actually thinking about this when I was watching Raw and they were bringing back, like, nobody's or not bringing anybody back this week but you actually stole my answer initially and i would have loved to have seen brizongo come back because those are guys that uh for what they were i thought were very over and they were uh loved in nxt you know like triple h really used them a lot they were tag champions uh and obviously i think as far as uh actually moving the ratings number I'll just keep saying Bray Wyatt is somebody that like would actually put eyes on WWE. Um, but beyond that, I'm looking at the list as you're flipping through it. Uh, again, there's nobody on there that I'm like, man, I cannot believe this person's not signed. Mm-hmm. You know, like I'm like, oh, this is just lost opportunity. You know, like again, Billy Kay is doing her thing. Peyton Royce is pregnant. Uh a lot of these people are doing their thing in Impact. You know, Jonah and Chelsea and, you know, Kashida's in New Japan. And I think he's perfectly safe there. He should stay there. Um, yeah, nothing else jumps out to me. Brizongo, f- for me personally. Bray Wyatt for the brand. Uh, Eva Marie, just to troll you. Uh, <laughs> nah, there's nobody else on there that I'm like, oh, man, I need to see on Raw. Okay. Or SmackDown or sure, NXT sure. or whatever. Pick someone. I so, want to see if you could pick who the next person. Like, okay, there's no one. Okay, they didn't need Dexter Loomis back. They didn't need Dollar King back. They yeah. didn't need Karrion Cross back. Who they? Who's next? Who's getting rehired next? <sighs> Go keep, keep a quick scroll down as this makes good audio as I'm reading the list. Please don't let it be Jackson Riker. Please don't let it be Nia Jax. See, those would be funny ones, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh... You want me to tell you who mine is? Sure, while I'm looking here. Okay. Ooh, the Singh be... brothers would be good times. <laughs> it's, okay. My <laughs> pick is going to be putting them on screen as a duo where they were in the company before but not as a duo. Uh-huh. It's going to be uh, John Morrison and Taya Valkyrie. Okay. Yeah, I mean... That's where my money is. If I'm betting who comes back next, it's them. Like that's that's a big who gives a fuck, you know. Okay. <laughs> like for is either that one a of big them. who gives a fuck? Yes. Is that completely within the wheelhouse of World Wrestling Entertainment? Yes. Sure, because neither one of them is really doing anything. Didn't like AEW brought in uh, Johnny Dynamite or whatever the Johnny Elites, yeah. and like that went over like a fart in church. So I don't know. Like again, there's a lot of conceivable people because there's like Braun Strowman's conceivable because right. like. He sells merch, maybe, or the kids love him. And, uh, like, I would hate it, so it makes perfect sense. Uh, yeah. 
No, I don't know, man. Like I said, put it on. Give me Brizongo. I think that's right. a nice, nice, affordable hire that I would like. All right, perfect. You're saying Brizongo, and we'll see who's right. Yeah. Just throwing that out there. All right. Let nice. us know who you think uh, on the voicemail when you call in next time or something, or tweet at us. Yes. And, uh, you know, we'll keep track to see where everyone kind of fits in to see who gets hired next by World Wrestling Entertainment, you know? <laughs> yes. Well, the best of the best. And I don't know, Joe, if you if you read Twitter, uh, you would learn that there's tons of AEW talent that's trying to get out of their contracts so they can go back to WWE. All right. There was a story that Triple H reached out to someone who's under AEW contract to try to get them to come back. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And they're all just begging to get out of that cesspool that is AEW. They don't mm-hmm. want to be on a on a show with Danielson or Punk or Omega or Hangman or Eddie Kingston, or Orange Cassidy. Get me over to that other show. Ugh. I got one last one to close it up with. All right. Well, I have one other thing I'll just talk about real quick. And again, this is a real quick thing. Speaking of AEW, uh, on Rampage, there was a match between uh, Tay Mello and Sammy Guevara versus Dante Martin and Sky Blue. I just want to say that I hope we see more of the matchup of Tay versus Sky because uh, this feud has legs uh, and other parts. Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> I'd like to see more of that 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 matchup. But uh, kudos to AEW for showcasing the AAA mixed tag team belts, which, uh, you know, I'm a huge international wrestling fan, as everybody knows. And I, it's a good time to, to have that showcased. But uh, Right, I know you... Sky. You get upset when you just get pigeonholed as like the premier Japanese wrestling fan of the soon to be named network. Yeah, it's but like you're a fan it's of living. all international wrestling. Exactly. Like, oh man, the UK wrestling, you know, it's, it's it's alive and well. Uh and obviously, you know, Lucha Libre. I'm very I know all the luchas and the Libres. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I had to, I had to edit out the twenty minutes of Adam uh, openly sobbing about the demise of the uh, NXT UK people today. Oh, I know that's it's a shame because they had a good gig. Somebody must have stooged off Paul that it still exists. <laughs> mm-hmm. Someone, <laughs> yeah. So I got my last one to talk about, right? And it's yep. the, it's it's been the talk of the uh, wrestling world for like the last like twenty four hours as we record this, right? All right. And it was the opening of AEW Dynamite this past week. And it's the whole thing to set up uh, CM Punk, who's the uh, AEW world champion, against John Moxley, who's the AEW interim champion. And then by the end of the show, we find out that the match is not happening at all out, that the match, in fact, is happening next week on Dynamite. And uh, it's happening in Cleveland And, you know, we know a lot of people in Cleveland, and you would think that, like, especially if they're huge punk fans, they'd all be there, you know, yeah, to cheer um, on their favorite. Imagine not going to that show because you might be sleepy the next day. Right. Ridiculous. Exactly. Uh, How big of a fan are you, you know? Yeah, clearly not one. So, uh, so all of that actually pales in comparison uh, to what Punk said at the beginning of his promo. Now... I didn't realize this, and maybe I'm clueless, um, but I didn't realize that Punk was, as the kids say, shooting or going into business for himself regarding his comments about Hangman Page Mm. um, until social media told me he was and that I should be really upset about it. Um, (laughs) I just thought it was Punk being the salty dick that you all love him for being. (laughs) Um, it's almost as though last week, like last week on, uh, we need wrestling DJ and Brett were postulating, like, what are they going to do with punk and Mox? Who's the heel and who's the baby face? It's in punk's hometown. Who's going to win? And all this other stuff back and forth. And I said to the two of them, I go, we got three weeks of TV before then. We got a lot of time to figure out who's who. Well, they decided they're going to put punk as the heel in all of this, right? Mm-hmm. And there was a lot of other rumor and innuendo going around today that Punk might have kind of sort of thought about maybe not showing up to Dynamite this week, but then he did, and then he told people that he wasn't going to put Hangman over, and he is executing uh, the clause in his contract, and I'm going to screw this up because it's been a while since <laughs> I said it, subsection E, uh, or section E, subparagraph B, which is, uh, that doesn't work for me, brother. Um, 
And I also said to someone that I would give Punk a year. And it wasn't a year from the day that he did that really good thing for a friend of ours mm-hmm. that we that we know of. OK, um, and we could kind of like a little bit more pussyfoot around it, you know, um, mm-hmm. but this Saturday is one year since he's been back to AEW. OK, yeah. I'm sure all of this rumor and innuendo and speculation is just a coincidence that it's around the time that his one-year contract might be coming up, right? (laughs) Um, I will say, though, when I bumped into Stevie Richards at the gym today, uh, (laughs) and and he came up to me and he he went to shake my hand because he recognized me, I did say kayfabe to him. Uh-huh. Um, and then later, apparently, Scotty got the boss got mad about it, and uh, <laughs> then I went to the front row at the ECW arena when Brian Pillman was there, and uh-huh. I yelled, "Don't work a worker at him." Uh-huh. Um, See, hey, I, man, believe, I believe I believe every get you guys to, to boot CM Punk going to this match. I guess I don't know. Uh, it, I'm glad I, everyone's biting on it. Good for you, you know. I believe everything that you just said, except for the fact you were at the gym. What were you doing? Like dr- doing a, was, like a delivery? <laughs> I was delivering the pizzas to the uh, Planet Fitness. <laughs> All right. That makes more sense. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Um, if this was real, they wouldn't have tweeted it out from their official account. And they wouldn't have put the interview in full up on their on their youtube page and the john silver tweet of hangman back in catering wouldn't have come out at the exact time that it did and the eddie kingston tweet about punk saying stuff when he's not there wouldn't have come out and they're working real hard to make everyone believe that he's shooting and god bless y'all for biting Uh, See, if it was really a shoot, uh, they would just completely disavow the person uh, and, like, not mention them at press conferences, just like the MGF stuff, because that's all a shoot, brother. Right. Yeah. That's how you handle a shoot. You don't promote it. And this all gets into, like, (laughs) sticky parts of, like, the way that professional wrestling works. And, like, they could have just built this match by having it be like the two guys that are the champion and like instead of throwing all this extra stuff in there and that's fine. And the extra stuff is working for some people and it's not working for some other people and it's turning other people off. It's like, okay, we're on our like sixth work shoot of the month, you know? Yeah. And and I've said this before, like I get that some people think you need a face and you need a heel in every match, but if you have two champions that is your angle. You don't need to put all this freaking haha, you know, I'm smarter than you, I'm working the crowd shit. Uh, just have the angle be, I'm the champion, I'm the interim champion, I want to unify the belt. That's all you need. The crowd can then make their decision. You know, it's going to be, yes, it's in Chicago, but at worst, would it be 60-40 in CM Punk's favor? You know, like, I don't know. It could be 50-50. It could be 60-40 for Moxley. But, like, that would have been perfectly fine. And there's no need to hot shot another angle in there and have, you know, good for the people in Cleveland. They're going to get to see a title change, most likely, um, but or a unification. But it's completely unnecessary, you know. And plus, you're taking away a marquee match from the pay-per-view. And, yeah, you can say, okay, we're replacing it with Hangman versus CM Punk or Hangman versus Moxley or something like that, but it's unnecessary. You know, you're they're trying to be too cute. So I'm half with you. Yes, they're trying to be too cute. Is it unnecessary? I'm willing to let it play out to see. If the end result is something big or something really cool or whatever, then all of this nonsense is worth it. And maybe my radar is just super up and keen because right before I watched Dynamite, I did get finished watching Adam's homework from this past <laughs> week. So that'll put your head on a swivel, you know, to to <laughs> smell something rotten, you know. Um, but uh, people are going to believe whatever they want to believe when it comes to CM Punk. Um, and again, he's got two more days of good words from me before he has to like, I don't know, whatever. Um, but 
I'm not defending CM Punk. I'm just going to say maybe you don't know the whole story. And maybe he wasn't the only one who said those horrible things about your favorite wrestler. Mm. That's it. And and who knows, Joe, you said that uh, maybe CM Punk's one year uh, contract is coming up. Uh, this mm-hmm. might be the final gem on Paul's mid mid mitten, as I try to say. <laughs> oh, what if? Oh, my God. <gasps> Holy shit. It's not at the gun. It's not at the gun arena, but it is in Cleveland. That's where Double J pulled a gun on Vince McMahon and held him up to be paid cash off the gate right before he left the WCW. If <laughs> Punk's contract really is up this Saturday and he's going in to Wednesday without a contract as a champion, oh my God, Adam, it's like it's like poetry because it rhymes, <laughs> you know? It's almost like all of this stuff is all just coincidentally happening. <laughs> Nice. Looking forward to looking forward to seeing uh, CM Punk versus Cody at next year's WrestleMania. Oh my goodness! <laughs> he shows up on SmackDown next Friday and throws the AEW interim title in the <laughs> trash can <laughs> and hands it to Dollar King or whatever the fuck his name is. <laughs> oh, I love it. No, they'd have to have uh, Phil start on NXT 2.0 and work his way up. There you go. Right. He hasn't been in the system in a while. Things have changed since he was last year. <laughs> yeah. Got to learn to work the WWE style. <laughs> All right. Speaking of homework, speaking of Adam's assignment from last week. Homework. Homework. It's an obligation you owe your family and yourself. Home, home, homework. Homework, it's an obligation you owe your family and yourself. So, uh, you are going to introduce your homework, right? Sure. I assigned the episode of WCW Nitro on April 10th, 2000, where Eric Bischoff and Vince Russo came in and took things over shook everything up, stripped everybody of their titles, and changed professional wrestling uh, forever. Uh, Yeah. So (laughs) if you did not watch this recently, go ahead over to our friend Kevin's uh, website, masslibrary.com. Whenever we assign homework like this, he does the full write-up of everything. Um, And I'm going to go through his write-up because I didn't take, like, match-by-match, segment-by-segment notes on this. But here's the notes that I took, Adam. Okay. Yes. How many times was World Wrestling Federation said on this program? Ah, uh, lots. And obviously, I don't know if you kept a running tally, but that does sound like something you would do. When they weren't mentioning WWF, uh, they were name dropping wrestlers from the WWF as well. So I, I'm only in this instance, I'm not talking about them saying Vince. I'm not talking about them saying wrestlers from WWF. I'm talking about them saying. WWF or World Wrestling Federation? Uh, before I say it, you know the number? I, I come on. I would be <laughs> asking if I didn't know. Uh, eight. Ten times. Okay. Now, I'll to... give you partial credit because two of the ten times they said WWF, they beeped it out for some reason. You know what? I will tell you probably why that was. It probably wasn't... Uh, WCW beeping it out, it might have been the old WWE Network and they were beeping out WWF. Like, was No, MTV? this was... So that's the thing. A couple of WWFs got by and one of the times was them beeping out WWF and one of the times was them beeping out World Wrestling Federation. Okay, because it wasn't WWE yet at that time. You're right. Never mind. I'm stupid. Okay. Uh, how many times did they say... And again, not the exact phrase, <laughs> but more or less the phrase... The boys in the back. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have a radar for that. Seven times. <laughs> okay. How many matches? How many times in the one, two? Uh, and again, are we counting Shane Douglas and Ric Flair and Kidman and Hogan as matches? See, I count Shane versus Flair because there was a ref, but I don't count Kidman Hogan because that was Bischoff. Okay. So in the five matches that we had in this Monday Night Raw or Monday Nitro, Nitro how many nut shots were there? 
<laughs> I, I might have zoned out during some of the matches. I know that there was one of them that uh, Sid got nutshotted and no sold it from DDP. There were six. There six was? nut shots. Oh, oh yes, Adam. <laughs> Did anybody yell low blow, low blow, low blow? Uh, a couple times they said he got him low on that one. Oh, all right. <laughs> How many times did someone say shit on this episode of Nitro? <laughs> uh, seven times. Oh, close. Six. And two of them were beeped out. But still, I'm going to give you that one. Well, you're only allowed so many. You know. uh, not the last, Let- <laughs> but most important. How many times was Jeff Jarrett's full entrance theme played? Uh, see, here's the thing I got to say. I made the mistake of jumping on the cock for this one. And uh, if, if I ever do it again, uh, like, uh, let's say, hypothetically speaking, I assign any further WCW 2000 episodes or pay-per-views or whatever, uh, I will definitely look for the original version. So uh, I will say I heard whatever the stupid uh, redub was twice on my cut. Five times. Oh. <laughs> Opening of the show promo, his match for the for when he comes out, his match when he wins, the inter when he comes out to do commentary, and then he leaves, and then they do the show closing angle five times. He oh, got his full entrance. You said Vince Russo. No, I said Jeff Jarrett. Oh, I thought you said Vince Russo. No, Jeff Jarrett. Oh, okay. Yeah, because there's there a lot of Jarrett on this. I would have aimed higher. And and how many swerves were there on this show, bro? Uh, incalculable. <laughs> well, there was actually technically only three swerves. The whole thing where Russo comes out and cuts the promo, and then Bischoff comes out and is like, "Are you finished yet?" And it makes it like there's going to be like tension or a face off between them. Uh-huh. And then there's not. They're friends, right? Yeah. Then Hogan is looking for Bischoff, and Bischoff is like, "Oh no, we're here. I'll tell you what's going on, Terry." Mm-hmm. And he comes, and and that's your second swerve because it's set up that Bischoff hated Hulk Hogan. Then he tells Hulk Hogan that he likes him, and he comes out to help him to hit him with the to hit Kidman with the chair. And then he instead hits Hogan with the chair. So that's two swerves in that one angle alone. Yeah, and then I just want to say that multiple slow motion replays of Hogan running the razor on his forehead. That was Dude, good in one of the most blatant blade jobs in the history. <laughs> the best is on like the live shot. He does the thing, right? And then he just, you see him like he's selling and then casually puts the blade in his pocket of his jeans. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so everyone remembers this episode of Nitro, right? But you yeah. don't remember this episode of Nitro. You remember the opening segment of this episode of Nitro. And everyone's like, man, Russo's so good at writing a first show to start things off. And then it all peters off from there. This petered off by the first fucking commercial break, right? <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, go ahead. Did this suck? Yes. But was this an enjoyable disaster? <laughs> One million percent, right? <laughs> Yeah, and obviously the opening segment is all that I remembered going into this assignment, but the uh, Mike Awesome debut was also something that still is memorable to today, you know? Right, so that's the thing. Like, everyone remembers, like, little bits and pieces of this episode, but, like, you remember the bits and pieces of the episode and then opening segment, and you're like, oh, man, this is, like, the coolest episode ever, right? Uh No, it sucks, but it's an enjoyable disaster, okay? (laughs) So the opening of the show is everyone knows Vince Russo comes out and Bischoff comes out and you have the Millionaire's Club in the back and it's Sting, it's Lex, it's uh, DDP, it's Nash who's not at the building yet, it's Flair who's not at the building yet, it's Hogan who's not at the building yet, okay? Yeah. Uh, And Sid, and Sid, right? So then they strip everyone of the titles, Bischoff like goes up and mans up to Sid um, and then d- says this scissors comment, which goes over like a fart in church. So he repeats it again. <laughs> and I'm sure everyone at home was going nuts, but nobody in that crowd had any idea what the hell Bischoff was talking about. It got zero reaction. And Bischoff, and, and again, to steal this from Kevin, Bischoff is going to, or Bischoff and Russo are going to give those young guys in WCW the chance <laughs> that they never got before. You know, like Brian Knobs and Van Hammer. <laughs> and Medusa. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, so again, Hogan shows up at the building late. Of course, he's the first of our, uh, you know, millionaires people. 
that uh, shows up late. But we're going to have a mini tournament, okay, where the four people of the Millionaires Club that were actually here at call time are going <laughs> to wrestle each other. And the winner of that is going to fight Double J at the pay-per-view to see who the new champion is. Okay, great. Uh, so the first match is DDP versus Lex Luger. Uh, Lex looks fantastic. Um, they do a gimmick where they cut DDP's music and pyro mid-whatever. And then they do it to Lex as well, or vice versa. It doesn't matter what the order of it is. Mm -hmm. That would have been a great thing if they did it for all the other Millionaire Club members as well, except just this one time. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. So match is going. Lex is bumping his ass off, like, way more than you would expect a 2000 Lex Luger to be. And then Buff gets his full entrance with Pyro, comes out, causes the distraction, and DDP wins. Okay. Yeah. So Mr. Perfect, Kurt Henning is backstage and it's like, hey, Russo, you know, remember when you, remember when you were in charge seven months ago and everything <laughs> was like worse than it is now? I was your right hand man. So, like, help me out. So he says, OK, well, you and Double J are going to fight tonight. And if you beat Double J, you get his spot. OK, great. Uh, Tank Abbott comes out and says he's just going to start beating up random people until Goldberg comes out and answers his challenge. Uh, he beats up Mark Madden. Uh, Mark Madden, who does not sell Tank Abbott's offense whatsoever. Um, Tank Abbott legit should have beat the shit out of him. It was great to get Mark Madden off commentary because he sucked then. And somehow he's even worse now. I don't know how that's possible. But I think a lot of people from WCW in this era are, are somehow worse today. Right? Yeah. Um. So... I don't think this Tank Abbott Goldberg thing gets paid off ever. No, I don't think so either. That's that's a key thing to a lot of this stuff that gets set up on this show, right? Mm. So Billy Kidman comes out and cuts a promo, and you could tell Billy Kidman is like nervous as shit cutting this promo. He does his best. Hogan comes out, makes him look like a goof. Kidman pinballs all over the place for him. And again, we mentioned Bischoff comes out after him and Terry talk backstage. He's making like he's going to hit Kidman with the chair. He hits Hogan with a chair. Hogan does a coast-to-coast -coast blade job. Hooray. But he does it blatantly on camera, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, and that's the other thing that everyone forgets about this. Like, all this stuff that's being set up, like, the two main focal points are Ric Flair and Hulk Hogan, who the commentators say have the richest history of any competitors in WCW. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, day one original Hulk Hogan. <laughs> exactly. Okay. All right. But I get what you're doing, okay? Yeah. So Flair shows up at the building. Well, I just want to say before before you get into it, just in case we never really touch upon this, who knows what the future holds. But I just want to say, like, watching this episode and some of the promos and stuff that happened after this, I remember thinking, like, God, you got to let Kidman beat Hogan or at least have him come out of this looking stronger than he went in. But that's not going to work for me, brother. And Hogan fucking ends up getting the win on that. And I'm like, oh, that was so frustrating watching that, you know, 22 years ago. So this angle, they end up putting like Horace Hogan involved in this. Yeah. So he could take the heat. Right. It's oh, my God. It's all so terrible. What happens after this? So Flair shows up. Uh, and now for the rest of the night, Hogan is a bloody mess just looking for Bischoff backstage. OK. And we'll get to the culmination of that when we get to the culmination of that, okay? So Flair comes out, and he cuts a promo. It's a great promo from Flair. Um, then Scott Steiner comes out and starts making fun of Ric Flair. And then Ric Flair gets attacked by Shane Douglas, okay? Yeah. So that ends up being the program for a little bit of Ric Flair and Shane Douglas. And then, like... A week later, Scott Steiner's a baby face, and they completely forget about him coming out and saying all this shit to Ric Flair, okay? Yeah, and one thing that you have to realize with the context is that Shane Douglas, this is like a, a surprise return. Oh, that's know, right. Because this was one of the other swerves, because at the beginning of the show, Russo says that Shane Douglas left and went to the WWF with Benoit and Guerrero and all those guys. All, yeah, the guys that all went on to become the radicals other than Shane, because the WWE didn't want them. Right. Um, but Shane Douglas never left. He asked for his release. And then when WF didn't want him, he stayed, but they kept him off TV anyway. Yeah. So Nash finally shows up on crutches with a mystery injury that never was mentioned before and never gets mentioned again after this. Right. Yeah. He's a good worker. <laughs> now, this was one of the things that I absolutely forgot about. So they show Nash coming in 
And then all of a sudden, they just cut to the crowd. And because the, like, the building is smoky from the pyro and they didn't properly light it, you can't see what they're shooting. But they linger on the crowd for like a good like 30 to 45 seconds. Yeah, because when they, they came back from commercial, it was, you know, it was clear. But Right, then they come back from commercial and someone figured out, oh, if we're going to show someone in the crowd, we should get a light on them so people understand what's going on. And we come back and it's Mr. Hitman in the crowd, right? Yeah. And I just want to point out that we are we are more than halfway through the runtime, at least on the cock. I don't know what the, the original runtime was, but we're more than halfway through the show, and there's been one match. Uh, two matches. The double J. Oh, no, we didn't have the double J match nope. yet, did we? Nope. One match. Nope. Okay, so there, uh, you know what? Technically, they, they're going to count the Kidman-Hogan thing as a match because Bischoff counts the fall. So I'll give you two, okay? Okay. See, I, I never considered... Because then you can say that Kidman has a, a win over Hogan. And I don't think anybody would say that. Right. Okay. So that's the thing. No one would say that, but that was 100% their logic in doing it that way. Okay. Okay. So uh, then they come back from commercial and they actually acknowledge and they 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 show Bret Hart in the crowd. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so next we have the other of the uh, two first round matches of the Millionaire Club tournament. Sid versus Sting. Uh, Sid versus uh, Sid Vicious. Uh, I was very sad to see Sid take two bumps in this match. <laughs> he was going so well and selling so good for Sting without taking a flat back. I was almost going to send it to a friend of ours and say, you need to watch the Sid match. It's awesome. <laughs> he doesn't take any bumps. And then he takes two bumps. Uh, so just like in the first real match that we saw, the wall brother comes out with a table, sets the table up outside, gives Sid the shittiest power bomb. Sid gets counted out. Sting moves on to the finals to take on DDP. This Sid, the wall program is never touched down ever again. <laughs> well, first thing I want to say, how did WCW not win the war with talent like the wall? I Brother. mean, that guy just looks like a million bucks. He doesn't at all look like a, a local shindy stalwart, you know? Mm. Oh my God. And uh, wasn't he like Alex Wright's heater like before this? Yeah, he was. Because when he was like Berlin instead of Alex Wright, and it was like yeah. Berlin in the wall. All right, it's all coming he, together. He was actually somebody on the come up. So, you know, November of 99, we get the Russo stuff. Russo's gone by like mid January. And then, like mid January to this point, it was booked by Kevin Sullivan. And there's that infamous moment from one of the Club La Vila spring break nitros where Hogan's in the ring cutting a promo in the red and yellow. And then he spots off in the distance. And Adam, when I say in the distance, I'm talking a good five to six miles in the distance <laughs> where they have the wall on a hotel, balcony, like a hotel roof, uh -huh. a spotlight on them like motioning to do the choke slam and pointing at Hogan. If Russo never Russo and Bischoff never came back, we would have gotten Hogan versus the wall as a program brother. Oh man, money left on the table. Jesus. <laughs> uh, so this uh next we get footage from the uh premiere of Ready to Rumble. Before you get into that, I just oh. want to ask you uh cuz I'm watching this on the cock. I don't remember when did like for your version did Sting come out to the Crow Sting music, or did he switch over to Metallica yet? He had he had the he had the Metallica song. Oh God damn it! All right, I got uh, in the future. I gotta get a a, a, a brother link to this. Thing. I I tried. I know, I know, I know. I had the stupid Kabuki Crow music. Yeah. So they have the premiere for Ready to Rumble, and this is actually one of the only pre Russo Bischoff things that kind of still becomes continuity because you have stuff with David Arquette. And yeah. Jarrett and DDP, and this is actually one of the only things that they still build on going forward, okay? Yeah. Future deathmatch stalwart, David yeah. <laughs> yeah, That's right, had uh, Nick Gage's best match. <laughs> Second best. <laughs> uh, best match. <laughs> so then we get uh, Kurt Henning, Mr. Perfect, versus Double J, Jeff Jarrett. Uh, and just like in the previous two matches, a member of the New Blood comes out, costs someone else the match... So somebody else could move on. This time, it's Sean Stasiak, who is going to re later be renamed as Perfect Sean. <laughs> and he comes in. He stumbles walking down the entranceway. He fucks up hitting the gum. He tries to give Kurt Henning 
his finisher, and I don't know if it was a combination of Kurt Henning not going up for him, Kurt Henning purposely sandbagging him, or Sean Stasiak sucking, but it looks like shit. It's supposed to go to the finish. You could see Henning audibly call to Jeff Jarrett, give me your finisher, because I'm not fucking going down to that bullshit. <laughs> um, and this is actually a program that continues. It ends up being uh, Luger, who ends up... So they set up Luger and Buff earlier in the night. It ends up later on being Luger and uh, Chuck Palumbo. Again, and like they're, that's the program, and then that intermixes with uh, the Sean Stasiak, Mr. Perfect program. Yeah, and this was also another thing where it's like, oh my God, Sean Stasiak, that's a WWE guy, or a WWF guy. The last time we saw him, he was meat. What's he doing here? <laughs> <laughs> I think the last time that he was on TV for the World Wrestling Entertainment was in November, maybe mm-hmm. December of 99, and he was no longer meat. He was just bland guy who wrestles on heat, uh, Sean Stasiak. Where was and at Stasiak and all of this. That's not until much later. That's the oh. back half of 2000 into early 2001. <laughs> all right. Okay, so uh, the Hogan stuff is still going on. Kevin Nash is on a giant cell phone talking to somebody. <laughs> uh, we get the Ric Flair, Shane Douglas street fight. Uh, Russo comes out and attacks uh, Ric Flair, causing the DQ in a non-sanctioned street fight that had multiple nut shots in front of the referee, whatever. WCW, uh, Ru- everybody. Russo, from walking down to the ring and hitting Ric Flair with the bat, is completely winded. <laughs> uh, he does proceed to give Ric Flair and fans the most awkward DX crotch chops you'll ever see in your life. Um, an unathletic fuck I've never seen before in my life. <laughs> uh, Nash comes out to cut a promo And it's a real good promo Nash mixes a little comedy in there Mixes a little bit of seriousness in there Says that he's going to bring Scott Hall back Mike Awesome comes out And lays out Kevin Nash I don't think they ever have a match Or if they do it's definitely not on pay-per-view Because uh, Mike Awesome Is kind of moved into a program As like part of like whatever double J's thing is, right? Yeah. Um. So Hogan's in his limo saying he's going to sue a bunch of people. And then in an angle that everyone forgot about and no one cared about from the summer of 1999, the white Hummer comes out and crashes into Hulk Hogan's limo, possibly killing him if you listen to commentary. <laughs> and it's revealed that from that angle from almost a year ago that no one remembers or cared about that Bischoff is, I guess, has always been the driver of the white limo or the white Hummer. Oh, you can't now, see it, Joe. I have, I have a grin from ear to ear. This is amazing stuff. I love this show. <laughs> they never had a real idea for who the driver of the white limo was going to be, so they just dropped it. The actual, like, at least according to the dirt sheets, the plan was going to be that it was going to be Sable. <laughs> okay. Okay. So and then we get our main event, uh, DDP versus Sting, to see who gets the privilege to wrestle Double J at the pay-per-view for the WCW World title. Uh, Double J comes out, gets his full entrance with Pyro to do commentary. Um, ref gets bumped. DDP, or uh, uh, Jarrett comes in to hit DDP with the uh, guitar. And DDP moves out of the way. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, mm-hmm. three Mississippi. Kim puts her head hands over her head. Th- four Mississippi. Jarrett swings and blasts her with the balsa wood guitar. DDP goes to check on, uh, and but DDP still wins the match. Whatever, right? Who gives a shit? Yeah, and Vampiro interfered and took out Sting. Right. So uh, they they all leave. Jarrett and his cronies all leave. And then backstage, Russo tells him to go back out there and cut another promo. Oh, and did I forget, like, Vampiro came out and attacked Sting? Yeah, I, I, that's what I just said. It's okay, yeah, head. so Vampiro, <laughs> right. So Vampiro, so, like, now Vampiro is the one that's going to be programmed against Sting, and that one does go on further, sadly, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, And then the show ends with, like, Booker T, who actually ends up being, like, a linchpin of all of this, 
like throughout all of this, he was just like another guy. And like Booker T comes out to help Jarrett where in less than like two weeks, they're going to be feuding with each other. Again, everyone remembers that opening promo. Everyone remembers bits and pieces. If you watch this entire episode, it's horrible. It's a mess. <laughs> but I love it. <laughs> oh, and uh, obviously, like, let's just say hypothetically, if you were following along at home, like obviously there's an episode of Thunder that happens after this. Oh, and there's, and then, oh, there's, oh, oh so wait, hang on. There's one last thing before the episodic thing. So as Russo and Bischoff are celebrating in their cromulins, uh, somehow, after he was just a fan of the crowd, Bret Hart comes through the entranceway, looks at the two of them, and we cut. That never gets followed up on either. <laughs> well, that's on Bret. I feel like, you know. Yeah, I, that's he's hard to work. He's hard right. to work with, yeah. Uh, unreliable, I believe, is the word that they say. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, but I will just say that obviously there is a thunder after this. I don't know if that's on the cock. Uh, and then there's Spring Stampede, which is the big pay-per-view that decides who the world champion is. Um, I don't know. I, I might have to look into some of that for future homeworks because uh, I feel like w- w- this WCW in April of 2000 was uh, might bear bear some follow-up. Hmm. Never know. All right. You never know. We'll see. Keeping in my back pocket. But, sure. uh, Joe, what's my homework and what's everybody's homework for uh, this coming weekend? All right. Well, this weekend is the big AIW triple header. Friday night is night one of JT Lightning Invitational Tournament. Saturday afternoon is fresh meat. And then night two uh, is on Saturday. JT Lightning Invitational Tournament. There's going to be non-tournament matches announced throughout the, uh, the the weekend as people get eliminated from the first round. Um. It's going to crown who the new intense champion is since mm-hmm. uh, Josh Bishop uh, finally getting both belts together, decided it's time to like split up the single titles. So that's cool. I'm always a fan. Like when there's a tournament like this, where you get like a belt or like a champion enters himself into a tournament and he defends the title through the tournament, both cool options. Um, so that's what we'll be watching. They will be streaming live on Jerry's Independent Re- uh, Jerry's Internet Wrestling Emporium. I don't think I'll be able to watch them live. I will do my best to avoid spoilers. But if you are attending the show live, a uh, friend of the show, Arthur MacArthur, said uh, that if you like, they put up the bracket, right? The bracketology, yeah, uh, of the of the of the events this weekend. And he had said, if you bust your bracket completely in the first round, drinks are on him at the after party Friday night. Mm-hmm. If you're going to the show, uh, let's talk, pal. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I just will say, obviously, uh, Josh Bishop won the absolute and intense belts and he decided to drop the intense one. Uh I'm just curious when Artie wins this tournament, like, is he going to be the intense champion and the tag team champion? Is he going to feel compelled to, to drop one of them? I could ask him, but I want to see how it plays out. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm curious what he's going to do as champ champ. Maybe mm. give me one of the belts possibly. You know, that's not a bad idea. He certainly could do that. Yes. Yeah. I, you know, uh, Chuck, you know, me and Chuck been hitting it off. I can always step in there in bulking season and uh, let Artie step off on his own. Well, well say, you're going to have to, you're going to have to grow your hair out yeah. and you're going to have to actually bulk up instead of being smaller <laughs> than the world's smallest hall. <laughs> My body's atrophying, Joe. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, yeah. So I don't know. I'll, I'll work on it. We'll see. A lot of things up in the air. Right. All right. All right. Yeah, I, I look forward to watching all this. Uh, might might have to treat it like a pay per view in that hey, we're gonna watch it, but uh, we're not gonna go blow for blow because it's three cards, you know. For sure. So, all right. What's next, Joe? All right. Well, next up is voicemail. Uh, let's get into our first call. Hey, Joe. Hey, Vansky. Big Sue here. I got oh. a problem. Uh oh. My problem has to deal with that no good, so-called strongest man in all the land, Artie McArty. (laughs) You see, you heap praise on him, you give him his own sepia button, (laughs) and I'm just calling today to let him know. Sooner or later, let's say 
August 28th at Old Wrestling. I'm coming for him, and I'm coming to take the sepia button for oh, myself. Shit. Good day. Regards. Oh shit, dude! I, I I love it. People are people are expanding on the lore of their angles on our show. <laughs> That's that's some uh that's a that's a big threat to Artie there. I I, I will say uh I would I would ha- handily give the uh sepia button over to uh Big Sue just with how clear and beautiful the audio was on his phone call. That does sound like a man who uh might have recorded his audio and then sent it indirectly the the, the Rolls Royce way of doing voicemails. That's right. But I will say I will honor. Uh, as much as I hate to do it to myself and Artie, uh, Big Sue wins that match, which, again, I I, I can't see him doing because I'm Team Artie here. Uh, but if Big Sue wins that match, the sepia button is his. All right, you heard it from Adam. He's yep. the uh, keeper of these buttons, even <laughs> though uh, I'm the one who runs the soundboard for the calls and such. Yeah, fair is fair. All right, now I will, ta- I will take back my statement. Uh, cause Artie is up next, the sepia button, if you will. Yeah, let's see sepia. if, uh, let's see how the audio quality is on Artie's call. <laughs> well, he's calling I've... from the old times. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> okay. All right. Enough. Hello, Ed Adams Wrestling. It is I, the strongest man on the land, Arthur MacArthur here. We are one day removed from probably one of the biggest tournaments in AIW, possibly independent wrestling. JT Lightning Invitational Tournament. Great names, and if you're not, if you're in the area, get your tickets. I promise you, it's gonna be a historical night, especially um, the day show on night two, uh, Fresh Meat too. You're gonna see a lot of great debuts happen. Um, I can vouch for all of them. I say it's gonna be a great time. Now, um, this is obviously about the tournament, and I already talked about me and Shark. You know, that's gonna be where it is, and we're gonna have a fun time, Adam. Uh, you know the plan, right? Okay, Absolutely. cool. Yep. Anyways, I put a a, a bet online because uh, <laughs> our old friend Porter O'Shea made a thing about getting a perfect bracket. He'll buy your bar tab. John Thorne, you're not allowed to do this. You, you can't. <laughs> but um, I wanted to go a little different route. I want, and I'm challenging everyone to this, and obviously this will only apply to people who are you know, at the show, but hey, maybe if you're not there, we can work something out. I want you to make an imperfect bracket. That's right. It's kind of like an anti-perfect bracket where you have to get every single, every single matchup wrong. So grade the bracket and pick everyone you think that's going to lose. And that's pretty easy, honestly. It takes away a lot of the factorials and whatnot from the other round. And if you do that, if you can get everybody wrong, I will buy you your drinks at the after party all on me. But uh, if you're not there, obviously we got to work something out. But guys, <laughs> I want you to predict, you know, if you can, if you got the time, so I know I'm a little long winded right now, give me your idea of the perfect imperfect or actually perfect bracket. So, all right. I love you guys. Can't wait to see you guys sometime in the future. And I hope you guys watch tomorrow. It's going to be a great time. Yeah, obviously. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, go ahead. You, you, you heard what I said before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Joe absolutely cannot participate in this <clears throat> because I feel like that is uh, akin to having John Thorne participate in this. Uh, they're all part of the same uh, shadow regime. So, <laughs> uh, I could, you know what? I could probably get a perfectly wrong bracket by trying to get a correct bracket, if that makes sense. Uh, But I I feel like you'd have to accidentally get one right. You know, like even if you were trying to get, like pick the underdogs, like if I was to pick Chuck Stone in his match with Arthur because I wanted to get the wrong answer, like at some point, John and and, and Joe as part of the booking committee are going to throw a swerve in there and are going to throw it all, all up in upheaval. So... Uh, I don't know. I, I don't want to pick, I don't want to pick the wrong stuff here. Cause it's, it's, I won't be, I wink and into the microphone. I won't be there. So I, I can't cash in, you know? Uh, and listen, I'll just say this. I don't want you to think that I have some sort of sway over the booking. 
Uh, you know, every once in a while, uh, John will take one of my bad ideas or maybe one of my, every once in a while I'll have a good idea and he'll yeah. decide to take it. I've wanted to see Artie and Chuck mix it up, uh, for a while now. And I'm glad it's happening in the opening round. And, uh, it's one of those times where, you know, sometimes people just, you know, tell me information and they're like, oh, I accidentally, uh, said how things go there, you know? Yeah. And, and I don't want any kind of stooging of Jaylet results or, or anything like that. So I'm, uh, as you slyly look at your DMs on the screen, I'm going to look away. I don't want to. All right. It's, a, it's I, away. It's away. It's away. It's away. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't want to know. I want to go into these things, uh, as clear as possible. And then you can always show me the receipts afterwards and say, ha ha. Sure. Was, sure. Uh, I'll, I'll, you know what? I'll come back and I'll say, it's like, uh, would I have gotten, uh, like did plans change from then to then, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. But, uh, uh, again, Artie's call crystal clear. If you consider it came from the 1800s or 1900s or I don't know, whatever the gimmick used to be, <laughs> if, <laughs> you know, if Artie's recording from the gym or a bathroom at the gym, <laughs> he needs to put like a shirt up, like, or a jacket. Like, you know how, like, you would put like a like you'd put your uh like arms through your jacket, you know, and then kind of yeah. like raise it so you like you're creating like a little shell over your own head. Mm. Then you won't get so much echo when you call in. Yeah. But uh all right, anyways, good luck, Artie, and, and good luck, Sue, in both of your matches, your match yes. against each other. Next call. Hey guys, it's Kevin. Um sitting here watching last night's AEW show. Um Daniel Garcia, amazing job. Lots of cool stuff. I've been enjoying things in WWE. I got thinking about, you know, what's been different, what's changing and all. And I'm starting to wonder, are is this a new era of wrestling? If we start to, you know, separate certain eras, mostly, unfortunately, uh, dictated by WWE, but you have, like, the whole Hogan Rock and Wrestling era, you have Attitude era, uh, TVPG era slash John Cena era, really. And it, it just seems like between what everyone's doing right now, it's almost like a new era starting. Um, freshen things up, uh, get new faces out there, um, you know, build up people. Like, it really seems like this is going to be looked back on as the start of something. And unfortunately for eras, you don't know you're really in one until later very often. Um, we all read comics. It seemed like uh, suddenly people realized, oh, there's probably a Bronze Age in the 80s, but we're realizing this in the 90s and 2000s when we're in the middle of another age, and we have to name that as well. So, I don't know, um, do you think that this is like there's just something happening in wrestling right now that we might be looking at a new era, maybe even newer fans coming in, or am I just talking out my ass, which uh, I will admit I do at times. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm going to bed early tonight, guys. I look forward to listening to you on Friday morning. Bye. Uh, I, a good question. I like that. Um, I, you know what? It's hard. I would definitely say that, like, from the launch of AEW and there actually being a viable second national brand, you can say that that's the start of a new era. Or you can say, like, during the pandemic when all these people got released and like impact had an influx of talent and the Indies had an influx of talent and obviously AEW, like, you know, the pandemic era being the launch uh, or even like, you know, Vince getting unceremoniously dropped on his ass and triple H taken over and like them saying wrestling, you know, there's a lot of different uh, flashpoints that you can point to and say that this is when, not things changed, but when like a certain era of wrestling started. Uh, but yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I, and yes, I'm kind of with Adam on this one that I think we're in the midst of that new era. And it began once AEW officially launched as that viable second national televised promotion. But the pandemic put the brakes on it. A lot of different things kind of hindered that. But this is kind of similar to what Kevin said there as well, that when the era is happening, even if we're aware of it, that things are changing, we don't really know until we look back in hindsight. You know, everyone says like, oh, the Attitude Era happened X, right? But as we're going back with these This Day in Wrestling Histories in 1997, we're like, here's a little bit of thing that happened here. Here's the DX thing that happened here. 
Here's the rock heel turn that happened here. Here's all these little pieces that eventually, over the course of like a six to eight month period, is the official start of what we consider the Attitude Era. Yeah, and if I could steal a very loose comparison, AEW, you know, pre-pandemic, during the pandemic, whatever, I I can say that's like the first year of Nitro, where it's like, hey, here's luchadors, here's some technical wrestling, here's some of the top guys we stole from WWE, and Triple H taking over Raw and, and SmackDown now, you know, I don't want to say it's the same thing as Vince McMahon coming out at the beginning of Raw and saying that, like, tastes change, but it being like, a, hey, we got to mix things up if we're going to change for the better and compete with, you know, the other company. For sure. That's, like I said, that's, that's another great point, I would certainly say. Hey, I, I get one every year. <laughs> yeah, you're good for it. <laughs> but yeah, good right. call, Kevin. Good call, Kevin. Last call, pink button time. Hey, Joe and Adam, it's Ed. Um, man, I got nothing planned for this call, you know? It's been a pretty low-key week. You heard on the show this week, not a lot happened. Um, Jay was this weekend, though. I think I'll be there Saturday, I think, possibly. Um, who's your pick? I'm picking Mikey. Um, so CM Punk and Moxley, right? Cleveland next weekend. Uh, I might be there, maybe. Uh, Joe called me out on Twitter and said that I must not be that big of a CM Punk fan. He's not. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I've been thinking about saying, I think you're right. I think I just don't love wrestling as much as I used to. Because if you would have told me, like, five years ago, like, CM Punk's going to come back and he's going to defend a world title in Cleveland against uh, John Moxley. I would have been like, fuck yeah, I won't miss that. Now I'm definitely thinking about missing it. It is definitely a 50-50 thing. Um, I don't know. I just hate being tired of work, you know? <laughs> Shit sucks. Uh, and I don't like spending money, and I got Colossal Con coming up. I have a whole list of excuses why I shouldn't, but then, like, at the same time, like, I fucking probably should, right? I don't know. They're going to do some fuckery, aren't they, where, like, Nobody wins when I do it to get it all out. I don't know. <laughs> WWE booking through looking through me, because that's all I'm thinking now after I just said it. Is, that's probably what's going to happen. I should talk myself into it. That's what's going to happen, so I don't feel so bad. I don't even watch this fucking show. I don't know why I'm so... I don't know. I kind of want to cheat one, though. This is a little rambly. I don't know, man. Uh, Mikey's going to win the j Bye! <laughs> Um, I'm just going to say what everybody is thinking and Joe, I'm sure I will, you know, you might echo my sentiments and say, Ed, if you don't go there, uh, to this show to see this match, uh, not only are you a fraud and not a real CM Punk fan, but, uh, honestly, we have to call into question your love of really everything that you've previously professed love for. So you're probably not truly a dude love fan. Uh, probably not. Yeah, uh, twice. I hear that's a real thing, but you probably don't actually like them either. Um, So really, like, what is true about the Ed Cody mythos? Really Mm -hmm. nothing. So uh, ball's in your court, buddy. Yeah, he was tweeting at people who were talking about this whole CM Punk promo Adam Page nonsense over the last 24 hours. And he would chime in and be like, oh, but Punk's the coolest. Punk is my favorite. Okay. You keep saying that. Mm-hmm. But it's coming an hour and a half from your house, and he's going to win the world title, and you ain't going. No one's saying you have to stay for Dynamite. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You could go to the or show. For, for Rampage. Ear, for Rampage. You could go to the show, put earplugs in, <laughs> sleep during the first, like, hour, like, two hours of the show because they do dark stuff and then whatever. And you're going to have somebody wake you up and agree with whoever you go with. Or if you go by yourself, like, literally as soon as they say Dynamite is over – we're out of here and you can still be home in your comfy bed and get enough rest for work the next day. But again, apparently, you know, it's not like CM Punk ever did anything for you. You know, <laughs> what could you do for him? You know, you can go to the show and cheer for him and say, I like you. Yeah. Can't do it. I guess. Bridge too far for some people. huh? Yeah. I, I guess some people are just uh fair weather fans, you know, right. There you go. It's, it's sad. Really? 
I've always been a CM Punk fan. What? <laughs> I've checked the receipts. I believe you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so enough of Ed and his nonsense. Thanks, everyone, for calling in, of course. Um, plugs, uh, we mentioned it before, IWTV, a.k.a. Jerry's Internet Wrestling Emporium. Uh, the price of wings are back down, so Jerry's going to be happy. He'll be even more happy if you sign up using our promo code, at odds. New subscribers, uh, they tell Jerry that you came to him from us, and the longer you keep your subscription, the more of a kickback we get off of that. We mentioned the AIW shows that are happening this weekend. Definitely check those out. We talk about them all the time. Tons of archival stuff. You know, I mentioned it earlier in the show. 15 years ago, there was a Pac versus Claudio Castagnoli match that happened in Hellertown, Pennsylvania. Even if you just want to see the odd curiosity of that match, go back and watch that. You know, go sign up, whatever, right? Yeah. Uh, you can purchase shirts and all sorts of stuff with logos inspired by this show through our T public store. The sale is next week. So we'll give it the full push. Then um, we are less than nine days away from the LVAC steel stack smackdown. The entire card has been revealed since we last recorded added to the show is the air show, which is Razor Hawk and Mach 10 taking on Havoc and Mung J. Lee. Uh, we also have the Batiri and Hot Sauce Tracy Williams taking on Ultramantis Black, Frightmare and Eddie Kingston. And then in the main event is Big Dan, Lucky Big 13. Dan. No. <laughs> Don't encourage that. Uh, Lucky 13, Logan LaRue, and Vita Von Starr taking on the team of Abby Jane, Cheeseburger, Delirious, and Orange Cassidy. Yep. Uh, the most stacked LVAC show in the history. Oh, and I mentioned that Big Dan's group is going to be managed by uh, two-time World Wrestling Entertainment Hall of Famer Sidney Bacabella. Uh, can't forget that. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, but a top to bottom, a, a mentally stacked show. Tickets are still available. Uh, the venue has been slowly releasing more tickets. There might be some... Some balcony seats open up. There might be some balcony seats open up. There might be some controversy or that, but that's not mm. that's not my pay grade, which is currently <laughs> zero. Uh, I'm just a dopey commentator who tells the people, it's like, you know, it'd be awesome if you booked Jeff Jarrett and Karen. <laughs> <laughs> and they just tell me, fuck off. Yeah. And, and Joe, I don't know if we mentioned this last week, but tickets went on sale for meet and greet with Eddie Kingston. That's right. So that happened on Friday night. That happened after we recorded. Yes. Uh, what is it? It's oh, shit. I have the thing bookmarked here. I want to say 35 bucks for a combo. Uh, yeah. So it's uh, 20 bucks for a photo with Eddie. It's $20 for him to sign something. 35 bucks if you want them to sign something and get your picture taken with them. They're going to have some 8 by 10s there, and I'm going to have some different ones selling out of the back of my trunk <laughs> if you want a little bit more of a variety there. And uh, also uh, available currently from Smartmark Video, but they're going to be available to purchase physically in person at the show. Uh, the last two LVAC shows, Bash at the Brewery and Real Rumble 3, are available on DVD. Like I said, you could pick them up DVD or uh, VOD MP4 is directly from Smartmark Video, or you can come to the show on the 27th and buy them live and in person. Yep. Hell yeah. But uh, if you're done with LVAC, I'll talk about some other things you can do uh, live and in person, and that's listen to these podcasts. And those podcasts include, but are not limited to, Longbox Heroes, Longbox Heroes After Dark, Final Wrestling Place, We Need Music, and Hit My Wrestling, Porch Talk, <laughs> Viewer's Choice, WWE War, Wrestling Cheers, IWTV Guide, Pod Van Dam, Wings on Wings, Between the Sheets, and so I can say it right, we need wrestling and hit my music. Uh, and those are all podcasts that I will plug each and every week, but a show I will not plug is The A Show. Did you mention No Chance in Helmet? I didn't. You know what? It's not even it, because it's next to, well, as of yesterday, it was next to impossible to find on a podcatcher. I didn't put it in my, my notes, but yeah, No Chance in Helmet. 
You need to have the editor and co-host send you the direct RSS feed. Like, oh uh, I- no, I'd like to go to Google Podcatcher, Google Podcasts, and type in "No Chance in Helmet," and then, oh hey, here it is. I don't need to do this RSS feed or send me an MP3 or, wow, whatever. But yeah, "No Chance in Helmet," the uh, probably the most sought after and like talked about potential podcast in like podcast history is finally a real thing. And that is uh, your co well, both of our co-hosts, Todd Roker and Marcus from uh, final wrestling place and other places, WWE war uh, have finally sat down for a limited series podcast engagement where they break down. I'm sure with zero bias, the uh, best helmets in the NFL as moderated by Tim Taylor. It's been what 18 months in the making almost. I know like, a lot of bribery and back office deals. And like, uh, I, I know like DeWiki had his hand in some of this scheming and I don't know if Todd had to p- put a mortgage up on the Cinnabon <laughs> one time, two times, three times. Uh, but he did come up with the uh, correct number to get Marcus to agree to record a second podcast in the middle of the week. <laughs> I know, and like I said, I, I feel bad that I didn't listen to it yet because I saw the I saw the tweet go out yesterday or whatever, and I went looking for it, and it was like you got to download a Podbean app, and I was like, nope, no more apps. So I'll, I'll wait until until Tim figures this out. And I, I saw today it is on Spotify and on Apple Music. So uh, it is out there for people that uh, have other means other than Android. The reason I email my remarks to uh, DJ and Brett for We Need Wrestling and the crew over at Wings on Wings is because you can't comment on, on episodes of podcasts unless you have the Podbean app. And yeah. I'm like, fuck that. I'm just going to email you, motherfucker. I got <laughs> five email addresses. You can... Yeah, yeah. And like, same thing with like the, the soon to be named network website when DeWiki gives us our weekly follow up. If, if it's something that I want to reply to, I just tweet at him. <laughs> exactly. I ain't signing up for nothing. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, that because um, the comment section on the Longbox Hero site is through discuss and like you could sign in with like your Twitter, you know? Yeah, I don't want them to have my Twitter login. <laughs> um, and hey, I was on Five Star Match Game this week. Uh, recorded it last week. It came out this past Tuesday. Uh, myself, uh, good brother Rob Naylor, and Aaron, who has co-hosted Voices of Wrestling, uh, is a former winner of getting a free Broski doll from Major Wrestling Figure Podcast. <laughs> Uh, she has a YouTube channel where she is a big CGC person. Get, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Smart uh, person. She, well, she, she gets stuff to flip it. She had recently got a 9.8 of Amazing Spider-Man number 300. Okay. Well, Jesus fucking Christ. That's what I said. <laughs> what I saw it come up on the YouTube and I watched it. And I was like the first thing that I asked her about when we got on the call. And she goes, oh, that's already been flipped. Jeez, did 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 we just become best friends? <laughs> I mean, <her. laughs> no, Aaron's awesome. Uh, Aaron's a great wrestling fan, and uh, I'll just say, uh, I made I made a mistake, and the host did not. The host and the other people did not call me out on it, and I had people coming to my defense, uh, saying that it could have gone. The question could have gone either way, but it was one of those things where, like, I said the answer. That it maybe kind of sort of could have been as opposed to the 100% right answer. And as soon as I said it, I was like, shit. And I'm like, I think I might be wrong. And the host is like, Joe Gagne, the host is like, no, 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 you're right. And I'm like, Aaron and Rob, you guys think I'm right or wrong? Because I'm like, I know I'm wrong, but I can't, like, I don't want to stooge on myself, you know? Yeah. And and I will say, Joe, I was going to save this for all heat, no heaters. But I just want to say real quick. Uh, regarding five-star match game and no, no, I'm not angry because I'm not on the show because I'd have a zero score. Uh, I I just want to say as a long box heroes, Patreon, I pay good money to listen to the shows in their correct listening order. Right. And I listen to long box heroes after dark and you're like, I'm going to be on five-star match game this week. The show's out and blank (laughs) as you then stooge the results of the show. (laughs) <laughs> for the 
for the second appearance in a row on Five Star Match Game, you ruined the results of the show. And I basically said to myself for the second time in a row, well, there's no reason to go and listen to it because I know who's go- what's going to happen. So I... My blood was boiling. I'm glad you find it funny. But you know what? You lost a listener to Five Star Match Game because of your big mouth. It's going to be on uh, JobberNation.tv tomorrow. Vansky shaking with anger (laughs) over results of Five Star Match Game. I, I mean, come on, man. I, and then I listen to Longbox Heroes, and, and just like now on At Odds, you're you're being very delicate about kind of divulging the what happens on the show. But on on After Dark, you're like, meh, meh, meh. like <laughs> here's the result. No, like, hey, spoiler. I'm about to say what happens. It's just all in one sentence, and I'm just like, no. <laughs> oh, big mad for about twenty seconds. All right. Don't do it again. <laughs> I won't. I won't. I promise. <sighs> anyway. All right. I think that's it. We can get into your favorite part of the show. Yeah, I need to cheer up here. Some might cost a little. Some might cost a lot. But I'm the $100 Vansky. Your figures will be bought. <laughs> All right, Joe. Ah, uh, not a huge week quantity wise. I will just say uh, I tried to be reasonably good. Uh, because I had my eyes on a, on a big boy purchase that I teased last week. Um, so I will just say, uh, I've got a couple purchases and I'll, I'll throw it over to you in a minute, but I, I will be quick about most of them. And I'll say, uh, much to everybody's chagrin in our group chat, I did pre-order the Johnny Gargano micro brawlers three pack that went up for order at, uh, that Chicago t-shirt website a couple days ago. Oh boy. So I had to have it, you know me, Johnny Gargano, Mark, micro brawler collector and lover of losing money to that website, uh, used my PayPal, got to protect yourself, but I did pre-order those. Uh, and one other wrestling thing that I did order, um, got a little bit of FOMO on this. I, I honestly, I bought it and I honestly don't even know if I want it, but I bought it anyways. Um, the San Diego comic-con exclusive Vinnie mates, the CM Punk and Sting that was like limited to 500 copies. Yeah. Uh, they went back up on uh, whatever. I don't even remember the word, Palisades or whoever makes them. Uh, Diamond Select something. Yeah. Diamond Select's website. They went back up and they're like, oh, hey, surprise. We have these still. And uh, they were like even cheaper. <clears throat> excuse me. Even cheaper than they were when they first went up to pre-order. Because I remember uh, like Brett or DJ in the doll chat. When they first went up for pre-order, uh, put up the link, and I was like, nah, I passed. Because I want to say it was like $13 shipping, and they were like 25 bucks for the two-pack. And I'm like, yeah, that, that's fine. Um, but when uh, Diamond Select put them back up, uh, they were still 25 bucks, and it was like shipping was only 5 bucks. So I was like, eh, 30 bucks. I've spent more on less. So I grabbed it, and uh, it's that cool like repaint with Sting's got like the CM Punk face paint and... CM Punk's got the Sting face paint and whatever. It was cheap, so I grabbed one. Is this the price for the other four? Is that the normal price? Uh, I'm looking at your screen right now. Uh, I don't know, because I, I honestly... Those are mini-mates as opposed to Vinny-mates. And the Vinny-mates are like two and a half times the size of me. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so mini-mates are the size of like maybe a little taller than a Lego minifig. Right, right. And the Vinnie mates are around the size of like a Hasbro. Okay. So, uh, I yeah, was, because I was just double checking to see if the Vinnie mates were on this site. This is what came up. So I was like, oh, okay, let me look at these. Yeah, I want to say it was like Diamond Select's website. Okay. But I, I guess the rumor is that like they they sold hardly any of them at, at Comic Con and they had sold a couple hundred on the website like on the day of Comic Con, but then they just released the rest of them. Yeah. 
But obviously we need that Orange Cassidy pack. That's uh, whatever the next series is of the four packs. Right. Throw the other three away and keep the OC. I get you. <laughs> now I got to keep them in a box. Hmm. All right, Joe, do you have anything? I do. Uh, so went to New York uh, City this past Saturday with the family. You can hear a lot more about that over on After Dark, uh, as well as spoilers for Five Star Match Game, apparently, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, they're so, definitely there. <laughs> so we went to the Nintendo store off of uh, Rockefeller Plaza, and my kid loved it. He was going nuts, and I was looking at stuff, and I wanted to get something for me. And again, I'm looking, they have like, you know, they have a lot of apparel and stuff, but then they have like New York store exclusive stuff. And I'm like, sure. okay, let me look through this. And like, everything's like smalls and mediums. Right. Mm. And then they have like this, it's kind of like a softy tea green where it says like Nintendo in kanji characters and then New York underneath it. And it has like a little Mario logo gimmick on like the back and I'm looking through it and they have a two X and I'm looking at the two X and I'm like, it looks like it's long enough because that's a lot of time. The reason why I get two X's for like the length so they can cover my giant fat gut. You know, I can really <laughs> get away with an extra large, but yeah. a two X is more so for the length. If I can get an extra large tall, which is impossible, then, you know, we're good, right? Sure. So I get the shirt, get it home. I try it on. Length is fine, but I think it might have been like fit like a Japanese two X. Because it was like a sausage casing on me. <laughs> so we're going to see what we can do about stretching it out to fed over my ample girth. Uh, but, it's, you know, it was, I wanted to get like a little souvenir for going to New York for like the first time in almost 12 years. Yeah. Okay. I didn't even know there was a Nintendo store in New York City. Um, yeah. It's like right. If, if you know, the NBC Studios is 30, this mm-hmm. is like 10. Like okay. you, would walk out, you would walk out to like the fountain. If you're yeah. like leaving, if you're familiar with the area, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. if you walk toward the fountain, you're facing away from the uh, the 30 Rock sign, and you hang a right. The Nintendo store is like right on your right. Yeah. Last time I was at uh, 30 Rock, I was at the like the NBC store, and I yeah. think I was like buying like this is before the merch was everywhere. It might've been like season one or season two of the office had just aired. Oh my goodness. And and I was buying a Dunder Mifflin hat. And again, this was before you can just go anywhere and buy one. Um, And somebody was like, Oh yeah, I like that show. And I was like, Oh yeah, well I'm from Scranton. And they did not believe me that Scranton wasn't like a made up town, like Shermer, Illinois. Uh (laughs) You know, like they're like Scranton's real. But I just remember that that as the last time I was like, in that area but nbc store was a little lean the last time my wife and i were there we bought what they had in stock of the magnet replicas of the tracy jordan uh movies that he was in from the show 30 rock <laughs> okay and i was hoping that they would have more or different ones and they had like no 30 rock like who would have thought a show that's been off the air for seven years they don't have merch readily available for it but whatever you know well, well they probably have like seinfeld and friends merch though yeah, I think that's, like, those are, like, ubiquitous shows, you know? Yeah, and one of them's good, and the other one isn't, and the good one's Seinfeld. <laughs> that That's a true statement. Yeah. All right, Um. cool. Uh, one of the other things that I bought, and uh, we might have a little bit of overlap on this. Okay. But in the Major Pod group, former, uh, quite possibly even disgraced former commissioner of the Facebook group, uh, DCA had a little bit of a major pod fire sale. The loose and, cannon. Sure. <laughs> yeah. And uh, had a bunch of major pod stuff and major pod adjacent stuff at like really good prices, like way lower than like anything else uh, or any other time. Some of these items were priced and obviously we'll talk about it in a second, but, there was some items that I even stooged off to you. And I was like, Joe, these are really good prices. Uh, and you'll get on that in a second. But I bought in my my continuing quest to have all of the pod adjacent micro brawlers. I bought the chase versions of the headbangers micro brawlers for about the same price as like they originally retailed for the non chase, if that makes sense. Yes. Uh, so, like, I got them, I basically got chases for non-chase prices, 
Uh, so I was able to check those off the list because those were figures or micro brawlers that I would not have spent up for. You know, I would not have bought them on eBay or at like the secondary market price, but I basically got them for, for retail. So that was awesome. And I had stooged off to you an item and you had said that you had bought it. So with that information, I basically DM'd him again and be like, yo, I just got Joe Sposto to buy uh, these things. Uh, so how about cut me a deal on this? And he's like, I'll save, it'll obviously save you shipping. And he's like, yeah, yeah, no problem. And I bought a series one major bendy broski. And you're going to say, why did you need that, Adam? You already have it. Well, I don't need the major bendy. I just needed the packaging because I'm going to put the mail away overly tan broski in the packaging and i have one of those stickers that somebody in the group made that says not so like not so rare chase variants and i'm gonna put that on there and i'll have a, a mint in box uh tan mail away broski bendy because i'm a psychopath and it was like That's really good. cheap it was really really cheap because i got it from david c anderson so but right. Joe, i said i tagged you in something what did you buy all right, so last week, uh, show's done in the can. It's programmed. It's going. It's going to go up here shortly. And I'm like, all right. And usually when I record, I have my phone on silent, like not even vibrate, right? Yeah. But I'm getting myself situated, and I get a message from Adam that's just the picture of the two Double J Major Bendies saying, <laughs> I know you're not a Bendy guy, but this price is crazy. And say the price and i'm like fuck i really don't need those <laughs> and you go uh david c appears to be having a fire sale on all of his pod stuff offer him x he just came down a bit on something i bought i'm like is this in the group and i'm like all right i messaged him fingers crossed <laughs> and again these it was the two double j major bendies i love double j i don't want to yep. become a major bendy guy <laughs> <laughs> you could go on the Broski site and buy them for 30 bucks each, right? Plus tax, plus shipping, yeah. Plus tax, plus shipping. So David C. has the two of them up in the in the group for 35 bucks shipped, right? 35 shipped. Yeah. So I sent him a message, and I'm like, hey, those double J uh, bendies, could you go 30? And he goes, absolutely. I go, <laughs> I go, give me your email address. I'm PayPal <laughs> you right now, friends and family, right? Yeah. I'm not a business, so I could still do that. <laughs> so i send him this i send them this at like 11 30 on a thursday night i get a picture of the shipping label on saturday morning and they're at my house by tuesday oh you got your stuff already I got them already man see i was supposed to get it today and i got a, a a notice from ups saying an exception has occurred and they'll be here tomorrow Mm, well, I think you have an issue. You have an ongoing issue with your postal carriers. So, <laughs> well, it's UPS, so like that's a different animal, <laughs> right? Uh, so again, did I need the double J things? No, no. But essentially, you get like buy one get one free. Yeah. Um, I'll do it. You know, it'll kind of like scratch the itch that I have waiting for the uh, the zombie sailor double J that's never coming in. Maybe <laughs> September. <laughs> yeah, this is a price you could not refuse no. you know like you said buy one get one free and technically you're getting two for less of the less than the price you would have paid for one right you know because you're not paying for shipping you're not paying for taxes um and so, because yeah. he was the commission because he's one of the sick fans uh <laughs> surprisingly he got really nice ones oh how about that what a coincidence yeah. you know yeah. <laughs> uh so that was the end of my purchases this week i'll have another purchase for next week i think you have one more big boy one huh or do you have another one i got, I got, a, I got a couple other things to talk about um but i i will just say uh regarding paypal uh, i sold something in the major pod group this week and i do not have a paypal business account i have a regular consumer one um but i sold something and the guy asked me what do you want me to put in the notes and i replied well of course leave the notes blank you know, you always leave the notes blank. You don't want to, you don't want a paper trail. Um, but he said, I can't leave the notes blank. And I'm like, mm, I'm pretty sure you can. And he sent me a screenshot and PayPal now requires you to put something in the notes, even if you're sending it friends and family. Uh, so I told him just put like uh, for dinner, 
you know, in there because again, PayPal friends and family is all sure, about sure. paying back people. Uh, so he put that in and it went through fine. But now you can't even leave the 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 comment section blank on a PayPal transaction, which is just surprising. They're cracking down. They're trying to figure it out. Like everyone's figured out the loophole. Yeah. So now ever like PayPal's trying to like close that loophole, you know? Yeah, yeah. And we'll keep figuring out ways around those ways. But uh, uh, I have one other small purchase, and it's not even a purchase. It's somebody gift skiing me something. Oh. And I mentioned earlier in the show uh, that a friend of mine went to the GCW Homecoming show. And I am following along on Twitter uh, because I'm not watching the whole show. I just want to watch the wedding. And I saw that there was given away or sold or sitting on the chairs. I don't know. Uh, for night two, there were invitations to the vow renewal ceremony. And I messaged him. I was like, yo, uh, I want one of those. <laughs> and he's like, couple minutes later, he's like, invitation secured. So uh, arriving in the mail at some point this week will be my own invitation to the vow renewal ceremony to add to my uh, my growing just for the bit collection. Uh-huh. <laughs> and if it's free, it's for me, dude. I got to get that, you know? I guess. But all right, Joe. Do you have any other purchases? Nope, that's it, man. All right. I have one other thing. And this is something that uh, many an episode of Porch Talk has been dedicated to this. So if you're a longtime listener of Porch Talk, uh, this is all, you know, old hat for you. But obviously, for those of you that don't want listen to both shows, uh, I had been thinking about buying a comic book, uh, a CGC of a comic book. And this is something that, you know, Joe, you know that I've been buying CGC comics for well over 10 years, like. 15 years even, uh, even before the, the pandemic and a lot of the prices exploded before the MCU or in the infancy of the M MCU, I was buying like higher end CGC books. Cause if I'm going to buy an old book, I want it to be graded. I, we could argue back and forth about it, you know, but I obviously don't buy a, a comic book from 2021 or 2022 graded, but if you're going to buy a book from the early eighties, from the seventies, from the sixties, I think you're pissing away money or you're you're being very risky if you're not buying a graded copy. Uh, so I've always liked to buy graded books. And this is a book that uh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, I wanted to buy. Uh, and I passed on it and I passed on it. And I was like, I'll get back to it. And the price just kept on going up, up and up. Uh, and Joe, that book that I bought is a CGC uh, and I'll talk about the grade in a second of Saga of Swamp Thing 37. Oh, wow. Okay. So we're talking like early 80s, the first Alan Moore uh, Swamp Thing. At the first appearance of John Constantine. Oh, okay. My pop, my bad. Listen to me. I'm showing my ass as a <laughs> bad fan here. No problem. And, you know, as far as the soon to be named network goes, you're towards the bottom of the comic book experts. It's excusable. I'll take it. <laughs> but no, so I. Uh, I never read Swamp Thing. I never read Hellblazer. And this is where I, I made the joke earlier in the show that I, I don't recognize this whole comic book thing. I, I recognize TV shows. Uh, and I'm not going to put over the Keanu Reeves Constantine movie. But when the Constantine TV show on NBC came out, I fell in love with the Constantine character from that short little what, eight episode, 10 episode, whatever, uh, that didn't last long. I love that show. And I at that time was kicking the tires of buying a CGC 9.8 of the first appearance. And back then there, it was maybe a $300 book. And I was like, yeah, I'll get it. And then I always bought something else. Something else was on my radar. Uh, and I passed on it and it, it kept going up in price. And then he popped up on arrow. It went up in price and I wanted it again. And he popped up on legends and it went up again and spoiler, uh, John Constantine in some kind of form is on the new Sandman show on Netflix. Right. Uh, and I was just like, God damn it. I keep passing on this. So by this point, the 9.8 is just out of my price range. It's like a $1,400, $1,500, $1,500, $1,500 ah, $1, book. I can't afford that. Um, so I, I've said this before on Porch Talk a lot of times. If it's a comic book from the pre-90s boom, like I like pre-94, 95, pre-previewing the past, if you will. Okay. Um, 
I tend to shoot for a 9.4 because it presents well, but the prices are obtainable. Okay. Uh, so like I always shoot for a 9.4. My first appearance of the Punisher is a 9.4. Uh, it's a nice grade, you know? So I was looking at what the, the cheapest 9.4 was on eBay. Uh, and it was, it was okay price. Uh, and I looked at what the cheapest 9.6 was and it was maybe a hundred dollars more. So I just bookmarked both of them. And the guy who was selling the 9.6 sent me an offer which was less than the 9.4 was going for. Ooh. So, and I'm actually just texting you uh, what the 9.6 looks like right now. So with that information, I said to myself, well, obviously I'd be stupid to buy the 9.4 for the same exact price. You know, like with all prices being the same, I should buy the higher grade one. But I was like, you know what? I really only want the 9.4. I will message the seller of the 9.4 and say, hey, I just got offered the 9.6 at the same price. Would you do X on the 9.4, you know, uh, and make me a deal? Uh, the seller of the 9.4 came back with a $10 discount. Uh, Still so the 9.6 was lower? No, well, it was basically uh, the 9.6 and the 9.4 plus or minus were the same price. Okay. Um, and then basically the owner of the, the lower grade one came back with a $10 discount. So I was like, all right, screw you. I'm not negotiating with you. I'm pulling the trigger on the 9.6. So that that's my big boy purchase, Joe. It was not uh it was not inexpensive, but basically I got a 9.6 for the going price of a 9.4. Uh and this book, much like really any old key book, and this isn't old, but it's you know, here we are. I'm thinking 1985 was like yesterday. Yep. <laughs> you know, 1985 was uh, 30 plus years ago, you know, close to 40 years ago. Right. You're uh, closer to 40 than you are 30. Sure, sure. Yeah, geez. Uh, so this is not a, a, a not a new book. Uh, so they they don't go down in value. Let's put it to you that way, you know. So uh, I'm happy to add it to my uh, my comic collection, you know. So obviously I'm, I, I'm glad that it got a 9.6. I'm glad that you, uh, someone who has the jeweler's loop attachment on your face, uh, <laughs> is happy with that, at least from the picture that you sent me. Okay. Yeah. Um, and again, a book with this much black showing through from the back. Do you understand what I mean when I say that? Along the spine? Along the spine. Yeah. So I, I so will say it, before you go any further, that is a... That is a common problem right. with a lot of these books. I am fine with it as long as it's a minimal and yes. b symmetrical. And you know? that's that's kind of where I was going with that. Like, you know, I could critique the staple placement. I could say, you know, like that line there is really good for a book that old to have that much black showing and not have that many dings or wear and tear on it. Yeah. Um, so you really lucked out on that. Yeah. My, my rule has always been, especially when I'm dealing with like older books, because again, I shoot for 9.4. Uh, I, it has to be white pages, like none of this off white or cream. It's got to say white pages. And, and I want a nicely centered or nicely cut cover, you know, no like overflow from the back or like the, the logo is, you know, not quite centered or any of that shit. I look for presentability over grade a lot yeah, of the yeah. time. Um, but like I said, this short of buying a 9.8, which just wasn't possible. Uh, I felt like this was a great uh, example of the book. Right. And listen, on the show we do on, on long box heroes, uh, Todd and I, of course do poo poo CGC, but obviously the main reason that we do it is the folks that go to the comic store in 2021, 22, buy 20 copies of whatever the new number one is yeah send them all out to get graded to try to get a 10 uh there i don't have any cgc books i have like a small handful in my head that i'd like to get sure and i'd say like the the earliest and i say earliest i'm like the newest of a cgc book that i, I think if you're getting anything past this you're you, you know you're wasting your money like adam said is like that first, like maybe like 24 issues of The Walking Dead. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of like key key books, like yeah, uh, Miles Morales's first appearance in Ultimate sure. Fall, not the acetate <laughs> comic <laughs> <not> exclusive <laughs> one. Uh, you know, like things like that. Some modern keys, you know, yeah. maybe. But uh, uh, yeah, I, I'm not like, oh, don't go getting the the first appearance of Punchline, CGC, or something. You know, these these super modern high production books. You know, yeah. Oh, Joker's daughter done right. You mean right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. But uh, like, I have that fl- the Flash 183. I think it is. It's the Brian Boland Captain Cold cover. Yeah. I could have the issue number wrong. It's from the Jeff Johns run. Like, I'd love. To get like a nice 9.8 or a 10 CGC of that. But I'm just like, eh, I'm not a CGC guy. But like maybe one day, whatever. It's not like a burning desire. Yeah, and it's not a book that's like, oh my God, so-and-so's first appearance. He's going to pop up in a movie and you need to get jump on it, you know, before it blows up. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I feel like I, I have a, a lot of CGC comics that, you know, have just gone up over the time. Like I have the first non-golden age black adam book you know in uh power shazam i want to say 28s and uh when i bought that it was maybe uh less than 100 bucks and and it's now knocking on the door of a thousand bucks you know Mm. because it's you know old and it's graded high so uh this is my my retirement fund (laughs) in lieu of of a 401k (laughs) right well, we'll see how that works out. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks. But no, that's yeah. a good that's a, that's a that's a good key issue. It's a character you like. Um, like I said, it's nine point six grade. So who am I to argue with it? But uh, like I said, just from the picture uh, that you showed me, I like the way it looks. Thank you. Yeah, I, I like it a lot. And actually, uh, I've seen some nine point eights where like there was a lot more overflow from the back because I don't think sure. CGC holds that against it. You know, I, which is weird. Like, as long as the pages are flat, mm-hmm. you know, and stain free, I don't think CGC carry, cares if it's, like, misstapled. They don't consider that a defect, which is weird. You know, you should have. Uh, I know they were doing that course to become a CGC grader. You should have <laughs> did that with your, your summer of Adam. You should have taken the trip down to Florida gone to the cgc factory not the yeah. cnc music factory <laughs> but the CN- cgc grading factory and become like an official grader yeah that's an opportunity there could have could have hit up super gabby storage while i was down there and uh and then never return <laughs> that would solve everybody's problems yeah <laughs> yeah you know what cgc's got a backflow or a backlog of uh books i hear you know and Looking for good workers, and I could fake that for a little mm-hmm. while. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, are you done with your uh, weekly purchases? Oh Jesus, yeah, I'm done, Joe. And uh, I guess unless unless somebody's mad about something, <laughs> I, I am. Let's get into it. So you slipped your all heat, no heaters in uh, of me spoiling five star match game on Long Box Heroes After Dark this week. Was there something else? No, you know what? I that I was gonna slip that in at the end, but it just felt appropriate when we were plugging your appearance to do it earlier. For sure. So, so I, I'm good, Joe. I'll I'll sit back now. Okay. So uh drove into New York this past weekend, uh drove into Brooklyn for a Pokemon Go thing, and then drove from Brooklyn to the city proper. Uh, in my car, no ferry, no bus, no subway, no nothing else like that. Like a real boy, <laughs> I did all these things without f- shaking or pooping my pants or any of those things, right? Yeah. So before we left, I'm like, okay, well, let's figure out where we're going to park, okay? Um, so I found this website, um, and again, I gave them social media plug. I plugged them over on Longbox Years After Dark. Uh, Spot Hero is the name of the site, the app, whatever, okay? Yep. Uh, you put in your location. They're going to pop up on a map where there's parking garages. You could reserve a spot, or if it's, like, day of, you know, uh, they could tell you how many spots are left, okay? Yeah, sure. 
is somewhat in real time-ish, okay? And they give you ideas of, like, the price on stuff. And they give you a little bit of a discount. You pay their fee, but it's a little bit cheaper than it is if you buy the thing there, okay? Yeah, it's, it's like TripAdvisor, but for parking or something. Okay, you know? sure. So I do the first one in Brooklyn. I'm like, okay, this is the one that's closest to where we're going on Pier 17. I pay for it. They send me the QR code. We get to the garage. I pull in. I go, I reserved it on the app. They're like, just show me the QR code. They scan the QR code. Perfect. Give me your keys. We'll park it. You're good for 12 hours or whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. We don't need it for 12 hours, but that's perfect. Everything goes great. No problem. So as we're getting ready to leave to drive into the city, I go, okay, we definitely are going to hit this, the Nintendo store. Let me see where the garages around here are. And you know, it's okay. So I'll say right off the, uh, so the first garage in Brooklyn was 30 bucks with their service fee was 32 bucks. Okay. Yeah, sure. No, nothing of a service fee. So then we do the one in the city. It's right off Rockefeller Plaza. It's literally, we walk out of the parking garage and the Nintendo store's on our left. Like literally like it's right there. Okay. Right. So I do the thing. I go through the app. It's in the city. So it's with a little bit more. It's 36 bucks. Okay. Mm -hmm. $2, $2 service fee, it's 38 bucks. I'm like, I could do that, okay? Um, So we do it. I pay for it through the app. We drive in. We drive up the FDR. We get to the garage. We pull into the garage. No, and the other thing. So when I registered for the app, and I always register for these sort of things, and they're like, oh, hey, if you're going to do it again, you know, enter your information so we have it. And I enter, like, uh, you have to enter, like, the year, make, and model of your car, the color and the license plate number. Perfect. I put all that information in, right? Mm -hmm. That helps move the process along for the future. So I go to the second one on Rockefeller Plaza. I pull in. I go to pull up my app. I pull up the QR code. The guy's like, it won't scan. I go, okay. Um. So I go, well, I go, I did the reservation on the app because I saw like the things are like, we're not going to be here for 12 hours, but I did 12 hours. Because like, it was one of those things where it was like, I'm putting the time into the app of how long we're going to be, right? Yeah. And I see like an hour is like 10 bucks. Two hours is 10 bucks. Once I go to, uh, once I go three hours, it goes up to 36 bucks. Bip, 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 bip. Once I get to 11 hours, that's when it goes from $36 to whatever, right? Yeah. So like, I'm like choosing my times on the app and I'm like, okay, I could do this one. I got to do two. I got to do, you know, I have to do more than two hours but I have to do less than 10. So that's what I put the thing in on the app for, okay? Mm -hmm. So the guy can't scan the app. I go, okay. And he goes, well, we'll just scan it when you come back. We'll see what it is. I go, I can give you the confirmation number. I can give you, he's like, no, 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 no. We'll scan it when you come back. Okay. No. Uh -oh. <laughs> so they give me the ticket and I put the ticket in my pocket. And I don't think anything of it. And I'm coming back and I'm looking at the ticket and I see they have my plate number on there but they have the wrong year, make, and model for my car. And I'm like, mm, I hope that's not an issue, okay? Mm -hmm. So I get there, and there's two people in front of me in the line to get their cars, and I'm trying to flag down an attendant, and I'm like, oh, hey, I did the gimmick off the app. The guy couldn't scan it before, but he gave me a ticket. You guys can scan it off the app here, right? And the guy's like, no, no, you have to do it through the kiosk. The only way you can check out is through the kiosk. I'm like, I already paid for this. You guys didn't, you guys couldn't scan the, the, the code before. They're like, no, no, kiosk. I go, okay. When I get my car back, so I go through the kiosk. The parking garage non app price was 60 bucks for the time that we were there. <laughs> and I'm trying to, and then so then I'm like, okay, I pay. I get my ticket from the thing. And the guy's like, we have this plate number, but it's not this car. I go, yes, I know. I put my right information through the app. You guys couldn't scan the app. You guys just put in whatever. I go, that's my car right there. I go, I, I have the key and I can prove to you and open it that that's my car, right? Mm -hmm. So the garage itself was just such a hassle, right? I got double charged for the garage. I personally think that garage with this particular app because they get maybe such a low charge back off what the app charges versus what they charge. Cause like I said, what I paid the app at $36, they were charging 60 bucks or 59 bucks or whatever it was. So I think it's a very convenient thing that they can't scan it. Oh yeah. So that they make you do whatever. Right. 
So yep. listen, I'll I fought over a twelve dollar fucking meal at Wendy, <laughs> right? No, oh, yeah. You don't think I'm not gonna fight over sixty dollars? So I don't even bother with the garage. I send everything to 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 Spot Hero. I explain the situation. I send them a screenshot of my PayPal stuff, and I'm like, "Here's your guys' charge on PayPal. Here's their charge on PayPal." Mm-hmm. I'm not supposed to be charged twice for this. I'm only supposed to be charged once. Refund me one of these back, right? I would have been like, "Refund me the larger one." Okay. <laughs> you know? And I said, "Just give me one back, right?" I'll, okay. I'll eat the I'll eat the whatever as long as I'm not being charged twice for the same parking spot. With in less than 24 hours, Spot Hero apologized, gave me a credit on the app for the next time that I use the app, and they refunded me back the higher priced one. Oh, look at that! So that's why I was like tweeting the thing out. I'm like, this was great. I get the email back. I fill out the survey. Everything was fantastic. So like the next time that I leave my house and I have to use whatever. Absolutely not a sponsor, but I would use them. Fantastic customer service. Um, went above and beyond the call of duty. But if we ever go into the city again, which we probably won't be, um, I do, if you're going into the city and you're going to park in a garage, the one that's on 10 Rockefeller Plaza, do not use that garage because they're a bunch <laughs> of fucking scam artists. <laughs> yeah, I, I will say just... Uh, uh, back in my importing and exporting days, uh, if somebody was to order a cell phone on the importer's website for, uh-huh. if they were to order it for in-store pickup, um, the pickup process would often have complications, uh, like legitimate complications, and it would be a pain in the ass. And if you got it to go through, the uh, my local branch would not get credit for the sale. Uh, So a lot of times it was the easiest thing for all parties involved to say to the customer, you know what, let's just go ahead and cancel the order that you made online and let's process it since you're here. Let's process it from scratch here in the store because that way there won't be any problems with the order. And uh, oh, by the way, wink, wink, then my store gets credit for the sale. Uh, So a lot Mm. of times there are some kabuki-ish things that go on in every every realm of uh, sales and retail and customer service and yada yada but uh that's why i'm retired joe so i don't have to live that life mm-hmm. <laughs> you well, can I'm just glad run, it worked out you can just run private scams and try to figure out how to get around the loopholes that uh <laughs> paypal is trying to close yeah exactly every day i'm hustling yeah. but uh, at least they're the anti-wendy's it's, it wasn't wendy's the ones you had you went to war with that's true it yeah is. so uh your your parking space gimmick thing is the anti-wendy's so yes but glad it all worked out. I'm glad it did too. Uh, obviously, this was, you know, we're talking. This happened on Saturday. I was much more mad out about about it, like Saturday night, Sunday, Monday, and then when everything got resolved on Tuesday, I was in a much better mood. So again, it's not as much heat, uh, but it's still something I wanted to complain about and say how shitty the uh, parking garage was. Like I said, very conveniently not able to scan the code. You know. Yeah, no, I hear you. Like I said, Joe, we're a lifestyle brand, and this is something that happened in your life, and people might yeah. experience in their life. So it's good that we throw it on the show, right? And oh, I'll even, I'll even um, run back on this and say, you know, if you do in the future, um, if you run into one of these uh, places where it's like, oh, it won't, it won't scan or it won't open or whatever it is, um, whatever that QR code is, like, do a screenshot of it. So mm-hmm. just in case you're like deep in the bowels of the garage, you don't <laughs> have to no worry cell. about like, oh, there's no reception. It won't pull up, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do that whenever like uh, like when we go to the LVAC uh, this week and I have my tickets are just in an email form. But, uh, you know, instead of relying on the PDF loading before I get there, I'll screenshot the actual ticket, which has the QR code and everything, you know? So just plan B and C always have. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, Joe, I think we gave him a nice full show. Uh, I would say so. Uh, this is a good one, I would say. And are we under three hours? I could look now. Yeah, we're almost like we're just a hair over it? two, I'd say. Yeah, you cut out some of the, you know, the whatever. It's just a, a, a little over two. Yeah, listen, if you're listening at this point, uh, don't forget about the Amazon affiliate link. It's in the show notes to every single one of the episodes. No matter where you get the uh, show, 
Uh, does not cost you anything extra. Amazon calls it an advertising fee. I call it the thing that makes Adam happy at the end of the month when he gets his cut of the fucking money. Yeah. And uh, notable purchases through the Amazon click-through include... Uh, somebody had purchased... Where the hell is it? A Transformers... T-R-A, I don't know what that means, Gen Legacy EV Voyager S Soundwave. <laughs> I recognize Transformers and Soundwave. The rest yeah. of that's just gibberish. The, the rest of that is just gibberish. <laughs> but, uh, cool. but yes, thank you. I'm sure you were inspired by Adam's purchases of every Soundwave piece <laughs> of memorabilia ever. On uh, If you want to go down the road that Adam's going down, I say turn back now. <laughs> <laughs> wiser words have not been said yes 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 but cool look at us mixing it up yep uh the show it's only been 200 plus episodes why should anything be in the same order every goddamn <laughs> week you know <laughs> absolutely all right uh so hey thanks uh everyone for listening for adam this is joe uh closing on episode 203 of at odds with wrestling be safe out there and enjoy some wrestling You're listening to the soon-to-be-named network, the Lamborghini of Podcast Network.